Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Marvel. Infinite Evolution Starting with Venom. Chapter 1. Beside a trash can on a street in San Francisco, a dirty boy was sitting on the ground with his body crotched, his eyes like a cheetah staring at the people passing by on the street. Venom, are you lying to me? Didn't you say that the riot brought millions of symbiotes to the earth? Why did I wait for three days and didn't see any of them? The young man whispered. Xiao Suhan, you have to be patient. As the voice fell, a black and sticky object grew out of thin air on the back of the young man named Su Han. The object condensed into a face, which was a bit funny and a bit terrifying. Seeing this face made of sticky objects, Su Han sighed slightly. It has been four days since he traveled to this world. During these four days, he not only adapted to this new world, but also digested some of the news that this, gooey, thing brought him. For example, this, gooey, thing is called venom, and it is an alien creature. Because it cannot live independently on the earth, it needs a host, and now venom has become his symbiote. Venom has had other hosts before, and one of the hosts that is most suitable for him is called Eddie Brock. Now, though, Eddie Brock is dead. According to Venom, he and Eddie fought another symbiote named Riot. The Riot attempted to take a spaceship to outer space and bring millions of their fellow symbiotes to Earth. The consequence of this is naturally the destruction of mankind on Earth. Neither Eddie nor Venom wanted to see such an ending. So the two worked together to stop it. However, during the battle, Venom was defeated by Riot and was severely injured by Riot, which even caused Venom's former host Eddie Brock to die. The most important thing is that Riot successfully brought millions of symbiotes from outer space back to Earth, and now they have successfully lurked among humans. After that, Venom found Su Han as its new host. When the Venom possessed him, it was also the time when Su Han traveled to this world. The two of them can be said to have really implemented the term, symbiont. Because both of them relied on this new body to survive. Be patient, it's been three days, if you don't catch anyone, you're going to die. Su Han muttered, but his eyes never left the pedestrians on the street, and he was always searching for, prey, seriously. Ha! I live, you live, I die, you die. You and I are permanently integrated. We are one body now, and no one can live without the other. The venom condensed into a face and leaned on Su Han's shoulder, grinning with big white teeth. You can still laugh. Su Han cursed lowly and continued to stare at the pedestrians on the street. As Venom said, he and Venom are now one. Permanent fusion means that they can no longer be separated, and any death of one will implicate the other. The reason why Su Han was so eager to find prey was because Venom was fatally injured during the battle with Riot, and he only had seven days left to die. Unless you catch a symbiote within these seven days and let the Venom swallow it, absorbing the other person's life force to extend your own. There's no point in being anxious. If they hide, it won't be easy for us to find them. It seems like there's no chance today. Let's go. I'm hungry. Venom said. Su Han glanced at the pedestrians on the street unwillingly, and finally gave up. He quickly stood up, turned to a small alley on the side, and walked towards the supermarket across the alley. The identity of this body is that of a street child. He used to live on the streets or on bridges. But Su Han immediately changed this terrible lifestyle after traveling through time. He rented a room and lived a normal life. Money. Of course I stole it. After all, they are people with symbionts, and they are more than enough to deal with some ordinary people. There are a lot of villains in this city. One more person is not more, one less one is not less. It is not a serious crime to steal some money to live. When he arrived at the supermarket, Su Han walked to the chocolate aisle very familiarly. Symbiotes require huge amounts of energy. Chocolate and raw meat are the best, but Su Han can't bear to eat raw flesh and blood consciously, so he lives by eating chocolate these days. However, when he walked to the shelves, he found that the chocolate shelves were empty and had already been sold out. Hey, auntie, where are your chocolates? Su Han stuck his head out and asked the lady behind the counter next to the supermarket door. The proprietress is an aunt in her 40s or 50s, of Chinese descent. Su Han was a Chinese before time travel, so he was particularly friendly to her, and naturally he was willing to buy from her. Yeah, sorry, the chocolate is out of stock, we won't have it until tomorrow. When Su Han heard this, he bit his lower lip helplessly. I walked out, 
planning to go to another supermarket to buy some. After just two steps, three tall men walked in from outside the supermarket. As soon as these three men appeared, Suhan immediately raised his eyebrows. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with the breath. Hey, Benham, I feel that the smell of the three people across from me is a bit strange, please take a look. Since Su Han merged with Venom, his body's five senses have become much sharper. I can see farther, jump higher, and my sense of smell is much more sensitive than before. As soon as Su Han finished speaking, his eyes immediately changed slightly. The eyes that were originally black and white suddenly turned completely white. Wow, you're lucky, they are prey, and there are three of them. Venom said excitedly, as if the cheetah had seen a lamb. Millions of symbionts have settled on the earth, and no matter how scattered they are, there will only be a few in a city. As San Francisco is the birthplace of symbiotes, it is normal for more symbiotes to appear. He didn't meet one in the past three days, but now he met three. Su Han secretly sighed that his luck was, so good. It's your sister's luck. Have you ever beaten three of them? Su Han cursed in a low voice. Venom was severely damaged, and now his combat power is as weak as a dog. He can deal with ordinary people no problem, but he can barely deal with one symbiote, let alone three. Venom heard this and immediately responded awkwardly, Well, I forgot that I was injured. Now I am a scumbag. Su Han frowned and used the shelves to cover his body, but his eyes secretly glanced at the situation of the three of them. The three people in front of me are two white people and one black person. They are all over 1.9 meters tall, and the black man among them is even more frighteningly strong, with his arms thicker than Su Han's thighs. After all, Su Han's body is that of a thin boy, and he is of mixed Eurasian and Asian descent. He is only about 1.7 meters tall, and his face is more like an Asian. Except for the color of his pupils, which are not completely black, his black hair and yellow skin are very distinctive. Compared with Westerners in terms of physique, Easterners are inherently at a disadvantage. Now there are still three symbionts on the other side, and one on my side, and they are still seriously injured. No matter how you look at it, you can't beat it. How about, forget it. Find something else. The voice of Venom sounded in Su Han's head. Su Han narrowed his eyes, and the fine and white teeth in his mouth bit his lip until it turned blue. Humph, looking for something else. Millions of symbionts are a lot to say but among the billions of people on the earth, it's not that easy to find them. Now that you have encountered them, don't let them go, and leave them to you. Time is running out, and we are going to die no matter what, so why not give it a try? As the saying goes, if you give it a try, your bicycle will turn into a motorcycle. If you fight hard, black soil will turn into gold. If you want to play, play big. Su Han's tone revealed madness and perseverance, and Venom was excited when he heard it. Tisk, tisk, I didn't expect that you, a little human, would be crazier and crueler than me, but I like it, hee hee. Su Han ignored Venom's words, but paid close attention to the movements of the three people opposite him. The three of them came straight to the chocolate aisle. Obviously, their purpose was the same as Su Han, to buy chocolate to replenish energy. Su Han quietly moved to the shelves at the back, where daily necessities were sold. Hammer, wire, plastic, rope, shovel, electric saw, everything is available. Su Han glanced back and forth, and finally locked his eyes on the chainsaw and shovel. A chainsaw makes a sound when it starts, but a shovel is more convenient. Su Hanshin picked up a shovel and hid it beside him. Venom, how long does it take for you to devour a symbiote? You don't need to kill the opponent, but you can devour it directly, right? Venom heard this and immediately said excitedly, no, as long as the other party can't resist, you can devour it. As long as I devour one, I can recover most of my injuries. The devouring time can be long or short. If you don't feel sick, I'll take one bite you can eat each other up. Su Han's expression was cold, the corners of his lips raised, and he tightened the shovel in his hand. His ears were listening to the footsteps of the three people. Three, two, one, prepare. Su Han suddenly raised the shovel and slammed it down. Just hearing a dwang sound and a strong blow in his hand, someone immediately fell to the ground. Su Han took a look and saw that it was one of the two white men. Venom, now. Su Han growled in his heart. And Venom immediately responded excitedly, Niece. 
Then Su Han's body surface was suddenly covered with a layer of black mucus. In an instant, Su Han completely transformed into a somewhat funny but extremely ferocious creature. I saw his big white teeth exposed, and then opened them with a loud bang, and nod at the white man on the ground without hesitation there should be a dubbing here. The unexpected move leaves the other party defenseless. Especially the guy who was knocked down by Su Han with a shovel didn't react. When he realized he was being attacked, he was greeted by a bloody mouth. Ouch. The mouth of the venom is like a snake's mouth, expanding to exceed one's own body. It swallows the other person into its mouth, and then chews it up. The sound of cracking bones makes the hairs stand on the scalp, tingling. Seeing their companion being swallowed, the remaining two people reacted suddenly. They entered the transformation state almost at the same time. Two symbiote manifestations similar to venom but distinctly different. One on two, the atmosphere instantly became tense. Click. Click. The venom was still chewing the man's body, but the big and narrow eyes were staring at the remaining two people. To be honest, the vitality replenished by swallowing a symbiote is enough to recover most of his injuries. Under non-fatal circumstances, he has many ways to recover from his injuries, and there is no need to hunt down his own kind to replenish his vitality. In other words, Venom would choose not to fight if he could. But if the other party won't let you go, then you can only give it a try. You fool, traitor, you actually devour your own people. The two symbiotes on the opposite side pointed at Venom and cursed angrily. As for the Venom, Shen, Harmony, used her long tongue, Harmony, to lick her big white teeth. I'll just eat it, how about it? The symbiote family also has its own rules and regulations. For example, you cannot devour your own kind. Devouring one's own race is equivalent to a death penalty under human law, and it is the kind that implicates nine races. Therefore, once it is discovered that the symbiote is devouring its own race, it will definitely trigger a hunt by the entire population. If not forced to do so, Venom would not choose to devour his own kind to save his life. But now that he has made the decision, he will not be afraid of the consequences. Okay, you are asking for death. The two symbiotes looked at each other and reached an agreement to kill Venom together. I saw two monsters jumping up instantly and rushing towards Venom. But Venom grinned cruelly with big white teeth, and then opened his hands, and the sticky hands immediately turned into two giant eagle claws, and fought back towards one of them. I saw him grabbing one of the symbionts, then raising it over his head, grabbing the head with one hand and the feet with the other, and pulling hard to both sides. Hiss. The symbiote was immediately torn apart by the venom like a piece of pizza, with muscles and flesh torn in half alive. What's even more cruel is that Venom immediately opened his mouth and stuffed the second symbiote into his mouth in half. Click. Click. There was another sound of chewing bones and meat. At the same time, another symbiote's attack arrived. However, the symbiote's attack on Venom was ignored by Venom. While chewing, he looked back and stared at the last symbiote, his narrow eyes full of teasing and ridicule. Little, can't you smell the royal aura on me? As soon as Venom said these words, the remaining symbiote suddenly woke up. Yes, they completely ignored this when they were attacked by Venom just now. Now being reminded by Venom, he realized that Venom's aura was unusual. Emperor, royal family. The symbiote said tremblingly. Venom bared his big white teeth and licked the head of his tongue, Harmony, at the other party. Although I am a loser among the royal family, I am still a royal family after all. How can I be compared to you? Any clan has a clear hierarchy. Venom happened to be a high level one, so he ignored the opponent's attack. At least, there won't be any big problems with this hard attack, it will only be a little painful at most. Spare my life. After the last symbiote realized Venom's identity, he immediately backed away in horror and begged for mercy. However, Venom counterattacked the moment he retreated. I saw him grabbing the opponent's body with both hands, then split open his mouth, and nod off the opponent's entire head. At this point, all three symbiotes were killed by Venom. Moreover, all three symbiotes were wiped clean by the Venom. Hiccup. So full. Venom burped and retreated, letting Su Han take control of his body again. Vomit. Venom was content. But the moment Su Han gained control of his body, he knelt down and vomited. Because of the permanent fusion, he and Venom share one body and are truly one body. So now he can clearly feel the full smell of blood and raw meat. 
The swelling in his stomach made him feel like he was carrying a baby alone. After all, that is the energy of three people. Hold the grass, my stomach is going to explode. For a moment, after Su Han barely stopped the strong vomiting, Yuang found that it was very difficult for him to even stand up. His stomach was swollen and rounded after eating three people's worth of meat. You have to hold your back when walking and walk slowly. Yu Yu. When the lady boss at the counter saw Su Han, her face turned frighteningly pale and her whole body was trembling. Obviously, as an ordinary person, it was normal for her to behave this way after witnessing Su Han turning into a monster and eating three people. Su Han smiled bitterly, and then walked over slowly. Auntie, don't be afraid. They are all bad people, and you are a good person, so I won't harm you. Please keep it a secret for me, okay? This time, Su Han used authentic Chinese language. Because of this, the landlady's expression was obviously much more relaxed. Although he is still afraid of Su Han, he is much better than before. She nodded tremblingly, the expression on her face still a little stiff. Su Han didn't want to talk anymore, so he turned around and walked out of the store. However, just after taking two steps, the voice of the landlady sounded again. Wait, wait a minute. Su Han turned around in confusion. But he only saw the landlady running over with two boxes of things from the small shelf next to the cashier, and handed them to Su Han. Su Han saw it and smiled. Because the two boxes of things are Chinese products, John Wei Shaoxi tablets and Yida chewing gum. Su Han stretched out his hand and took it, saying thank you. Practice more yoga and it will be good for your body. After the boss lady finished speaking, she went to get a mop to remove the blood stains on the floor. And Su Han couldn't help but look at her one more time before leaving. The house Su Han rented was quite far from the supermarket. It took him almost an hour to get home. After finally climbing up to the second floor, and just as he was about to take out the key and open the door, a person came up from downstairs. Hey, Su Su, are you back? When Su Han saw that person, his brows jumped immediately. But then he gave a warm smile and said, Hey, Peter, are you working part time? This Peter's full name is, Peter Parker. That's right, it's the grassroots hero that everyone is familiar with, Spider-Man. Su Han didn't know why Peter and Parker, who originally lived in New York, appeared in San Francisco. What's even better was that after Su Han rented this room, he accidentally discovered that he and Peter and Parker were neighbors. The two of them lived on the second floor, and the rooms faced each other. What makes Su Han even more confused is that Peter and Parker are very good to him. When they first met, Peter and Parker gave Su Han a lot of help. At least half of the clothes in his room were given by Peter and Parker. Su Han's identity in this world is that of a wanderer, with nothing but a set of tattered clothes. After Peter and Parker saw him, they gave some of his clothes to Su Han. Both of them are not very tall, but they fit well. Su Han didn't mind that these were old clothes. After all, for a street kid, some clothes were good to wear. After getting to know each other in the past few days, Su Han knew that Peter Parker was now in college, his uncle had passed away, and his aunt had retired. So he had to earn his own tuition and living expenses. Going to school and working at the same time is also very hard. You haven't eaten yet, I brought you some pizza. Peter enthusiastically took out a small cardboard box from his backpack. As soon as the small paper box appeared, the smell of grilled meat pizza wafted out. When Su Han heard it, he immediately thought of the three symbiotes eaten by the venom. Yu Wang's vomiting that he had finally suppressed suddenly surged to the extreme. Vomit. Su Han didn't have time to say anything, he opened the door and rushed into the toilet and started vomiting wildly. It took more than 10 minutes for Su Han to suppress the nausea. But he was also completely exhausted. Call. Call. He crawled on the edge of the toilet, his head hanging feebly. Dong dong dong. There was a knock on the door, and then Peter appeared at the bathroom door with two pills and a glass of water. Did you eat something bad? This medicine is very effective. I used to eat too much at the buffet, so just take some of this and it will be fine. Su Han glanced at Peter in surprise, took the medicine and water, and swallowed it. Let me help you lie down on the bed. Peter enthusiastically helped Su Han up before leaving. Su Han did feel much better after lying down. 
I don't know if it was the pills given by Peter that took effect or because of the strong digestive ability of the venom. In short, Su Han felt that his stomach was not as bloated as before. However, within a few minutes, Su Han felt a huge heat in his body, as if he had fallen into boiling water. What happened? Su Han asked immediately. It's a bit bad. It seems because I swallowed three symbiotes and absorbed too much life force. This life force still has a lot of residue after repairing my injuries, and this life force is now like a blockage in your body. The floods are coming, and they want to find an outlet to vent. Venom explained. However, Su Han replied, speak humanly. Venom immediately responded in more concise and clear words, your body is mutating. But it's not too dangerous, just endure it. Grass. Su Han cursed lowly, then curled up, biting the quilt with his teeth, and this comment suddenly appeared in his mind. In a science fiction world, the rich rely on technology, and the poor rely on mutation. Su Han felt that his current situation was somewhat similar to Spider-Man. It's just that Spider-Man's body mutates because of spider toxins. And he did it because of excess vitality. Hiss. Hiss. Su Han bit the quilt. Sometimes his body was bowed like a shrimp, sometimes stretched like an arrow string. His whole body was twitching and shaking. Sweat was secreted from his body like a tide, and his clothes were all gone in a moment. It was sweat at first, then some black liquid, accompanied by a strong stench. This is like washing the marrow and changing the tendons in fantasy novels. Su Han's body is undergoing some mysterious changes. How long, how long? Su Han asked Venom. The tone of his voice changed with pain. Ah, it hasn't started yet. Venom replied. What? What a fool. I'm in such pain before I even start, it's going to kill me. Su Han cursed, then jumped up suddenly, rushed into the bathroom, turned on the faucet, and let the cold water wash down. It's about to begin. The venom also reported the excessive vitality in Su Han's body in real time. Really. As venom's words fell, Su Han felt as if a ferocious beast awakened in his body, and began to hit his internal organs, trying to tear him apart. Ah. Su Han Zhang finally roared. But I only shouted halfway before I got stuck. Because the venom suddenly takes over the dominance of the body at this time. Let me do it. With your human endurance limit, I'm afraid you won't be able to withstand such a huge impact of life force. After Venom finished speaking, Su Han had completed his transformation. Su Han forgot when he lost consciousness. Anyway, when he woke up, it was already noon the next day. He opened his eyes faintly and found himself lying on the floor of the bathroom. The rainwater from the lotus pods was still spraying, and the clothes on my body had already been turned into pieces and scattered around the ground. He looked at himself and saw that there were not many changes on the surface of his body. He quickly got up and turned off the water, but by accident, he pulled down the entire switch. The water splash exploded like exploding fireworks, spraying all over the bathroom. Su Han rushed out quickly and stared at the handle in his hand for several seconds without regaining consciousness. Venom. My physical condition. Before Su Han could finish speaking, Venom's proud voice immediately sounded. Hey, you're awake. We really got a blessing in disguise this time. How to say. Your body was washed and impacted by excessive vitality, and a certain evolutionary mechanism was accidentally activated. Speak English. Su Hanming didn't speak secretly. He was young and didn't study much. Even though he was a man for two generations, his academic qualifications were only that of a high school student who had not graduated. He doesn't understand the high-end theory of evolutionary mechanism. He needed a more concise and clear narrative. Venom pondered for a moment, seemed to be sorting out the vocabulary, and then said, I swallowed the life force of three symbionts and activated your body's evolution. From today on, as long as you obtain enough life force, you can continue to evolve. Quote. You also discovered just now that your strength is much greater than before. I can tell you this specific value clearly, it is double, exactly double. Swallowing three symbiotes will double the overall strength of your body. What about swallowing 30 or 300? Although it won't double every time, the growth rate will definitely not be low, you kid. I'm going to be Superman. After hearing the last sentence, Su Han's frown suddenly relaxed. Then he clenched his fist and punched the wall in front of him. Boom. 
The wall that was originally extremely fragile now seemed to be made of paper and could be easily penetrated. This contrast between before and after made Su Han feel unreal. He punched again, and there was another hole. After playing two rounds in succession, Su Han finally found some real feeling. The corners of his lips gradually rose. However, the next second, his stomach growled. Then came a strong feeling of hunger. So hungry. I feel like I could eat a cow. Su Han really felt hungry. This kind of hunger was unprecedented. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention it. Just because your body has turned on the ability to evolve, you will often feel hungry from today on. This hunger is stronger than our symbionts. In other words, we need lots of food. Su Han nodded. Food is the most important thing for people, and eating is the most important thing. He quickly put on his clothes and then took out all his belongings from under the pillow 50 US dollars. Let's go eat the buffet. At 12 o'clock at noon, outside the most famous and largest buffet restaurant in San Francisco. Su Han looked at the time anxiously. Soon, a thin figure appeared at the corner of the street. Su Su, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. Peter hurriedly ran to Su Han. Su Han called Peter half an hour ago and asked him to have dinner with him. One was to show Peter's care for him. Another one is. The minimum spend in the restaurant is 50 United States dollars per two persons. It was also 50 yuan for one person to eat, and 50 yuan for two people to eat. Based on the principle of not wasting, he called Peter. Su Han was already so hungry that his chest was pressed against his back, and after having Peter for half an hour, he was already so hungry that he was a little anxious. I'm so hungry, let's go. Su Han took the lead and walked to the restaurant. After paying the money, Su Han ignored Peter and walked directly to the food area. He took whatever he saw and stuffed it into his mouth, which made people around him look at him. Su Han didn't care about their looks at all. He filled up as much food as possible, then found a dining table and started eating. Wow, Su Su, you took so much, can you finish it? Peter came over with a dinner plate and sat directly opposite Su Han. He didn't take much food, less than one-tenth of the food in front of Su Han. Su Han glanced at him, smiled politely and nodded, then moved his hands together to put the food in. The deft movements and rapid swallowing completely stunned Peter opposite him. Whoa, slow down, slow down, be careful of choking. Peter worried. I'm growing a need to eat. While Su Han was eating, he took the time to say a few words. After hearing this, Peter gave an, I understand you, expression. After all, Peter is only a few years older than Su Han. They are both people who have gone through adolescence and know the kind of time when they can eat four or five bowls of rice at a meal. However, what shocked him was that he just didn't notice that Su Han had already eaten all the food in front of him. This. Peter blinked in disbelief. Su Su, are you eating too fast? Su Han swallowed the food in his mouth, stacked the empty plates in front of him into a pile, pushed them aside, and stood up to get the food again. A few minutes later, Su Han came over with another pile of food. After reading it, Peter was speechless. He even stopped eating himself and just watched Su Han eat. In less than five minutes, Su Han ate all the food in front of him. Comfortable. Su Han patted his belly. Peter showed a kind smile, then lowered his head and whispered, Su Su, have you seen that the waiters are watching you eat? Su Han heard this and raised his head. Sure enough, he found that the waiters in the hall were staring at his table. In fact, not only the waiters, but also the surrounding diners have more or less glanced here. After all, Su Han has eaten two or three times more than a normal person, which can be seen from the piles of empty plates next to him. However, Su Han smiled calmly. Then he got up again. You. Peter didn't know what to say. He could only watch as Su Han brought a lot of food over again, and then continued to eat. At this time, the venom was laughing crazily in Su Han's brain. Ha ha, Su Han, your appetite has exceeded mine. Smile like a hammer, I'm hungry. Su Han is indeed hungry. Although he had eaten so much, he did not feel full and his stomach was still empty. Hey, now you know our symbiote's thirst for food, right? But let me tell you, the things you eat are not nutritious. If you want to fill your stomach, the best way is to eat meat. Su Han, who was stuffing donuts into his mouth, paused for a moment, then snorted coldly. 
HMPH, eat meat. Ordinary meat won't be able to fill me up, right? Su Han understood that there was really a big problem with his body. This strong sense of hunger just shows that he urgently needs a lot of energy now. Now he is like a huge sponge. The food in front of him is just small water droplets, which cannot satisfy the needs of the sponge at all. He needs streams, rivers, even the sea. Su Han understands even more that the best food for him now is not these junk foods, nor ordinary meat, but symbionts. Half an hour later. Sir, here's your fifty dollars. We'll give it back to you. Can you finish your meal? The manager of the restaurant walked up to Su Han very respectfully, held fifty yuan in both hands, bent down and handed it to Su Han. Peter beside him was so surprised by Su Han's appetite that he could no longer speak. He could only watch in a daze as Su Han dealt with the manager's request. Sorry, I'm not a person who eats overlord meals. I have to pay for food, so I can't take back the money. Su Han refused seriously and continued to eat. The manager was about to cry. Is this a $50 thing? The manager glanced at the empty dinner plate next to Su Han. At least 200. In other words, Su Han ate a quarter of the restaurant's supply alone. Let alone charging him 50 yuan, even charging him 500 yuan would still be a loss for Chushang. The manager refunded him 50 yuan and just asked him to leave politely. However, Su Han pretended to be confused, which made the manager want to die. In the end, Su Han left the buffet restaurant. He was not bombarded, but of his own free will. Because he had wiped out all the food in the restaurant. At least, all the ingredients that the restaurant had prepared for the whole day had been eaten by Su Han. Su Han saw the manager cry three times and the boss cry five times. He couldn't bear to let them continue crying, so he left the restaurant before it closed down. Outside the door of the restaurant, Su Han touched his belly with a melancholy look on his face. Hungry. However, he has no money left. The last time I robbed a gangster, I only got less than $300. I spent 200 to pay the rent, spent 50 here and there, and the last 50 was spent on the buffet. Peter saw Su Han looking hungry and excited. Su Su, don't tell me, you haven't eaten enough yet. Su Han looked back and smiled, a little embarrassed, and then nodded. I'm growing. Su Han could only use this reason to fool Peter. Ha ha, I didn't eat as much as you when I was growing up. You were too scary. Peter quipped. But Su Han replied. That's why you don't grow taller. Peter is 1.75 meters tall, which is considered normal height in the east. But in the west, this is a dwarf. Peter smiled helplessly, then patted Su Han on the back and said, Go back first, I'm going to work part time, and I'll bring you pizza when I come back. Peter now works part time at a pizza shop. If there was unsold pizza, he could secretly bring some back to Su Han. He has been doing this for the past few days. That's why Su Han was particularly grateful to him. It is very rare to be able to achieve this step by chance. So Su Han already regarded him as a close friend. Okay. The two parted, but Su Han did not go home. Peter had to work part time for at least two hours, maybe more. When he comes back with pizza, Su Han is afraid that he will starve to death. He had to find food on his own. The first step is to get some money. No matter where you are, if you have money, you can travel all over the world, but if you don't have money, it will be difficult to move around. Peter began to walk towards the most chaotic area of San Francisco, Fishman Harbor. The Fishman Port is a port where humans and humans are mixed, traders, tourists, underworld, and thieves are all active in this place. The daily flow of people is close to half of San Francisco's total population. This place is the most prone to robbery, theft and gangsterism. Fishman Port, Doc. The atmosphere in the Fishman Port today is subtle. Anyone with a discerning eye can tell at a glance that there is a big shot here today. After all, there are city guards guarding all sides of the port, which was not the case in the past. So when Su Han arrived here, his brows furrowed slightly. After seeing so many city guards, he was about to change places when a voice sounded quietly. Today, Stark Industries will unload a batch of raw materials here. We must rob this batch of goods. Um, Su Han was surprised. Is my hearing this terrible now? When Su Han and Venom are permanently fused, the five senses are improved. But today, he found that his hearing was even stronger. 
because the person who said this was at least a hundred meters away from him, and he was standing in a crowd and whispered into the headset. But Su Han still heard it. It can be seen that his hearing has reached a very strong level. It should be that the body has been strengthened after mutating. Su Han thought to himself. Stark Industries, that is Iron Man's industry. Su Han was surprised that someone dared to disturb Tai Sui. However, this has nothing to do with him. Without thinking, he turned and left. Just as he had gone not far, something happened. A large number of armed men suddenly appeared among the people in Fishman Port. Those people carried guns and fired wildly at the city guards. In an instant, many city guards fell, including many innocent civilians. Su Han pursed his lower lip and decided to leave. Although this is a Marvel world filled with superheroes, he doesn't want to be a hero. All he wanted now was to have a full stomach. However, he didn't want to cause trouble, but trouble got into him. Several armed men appeared out of nowhere and appeared directly opposite Su Han. Those people didn't even think about it, they just raised their guns and shot. 2222. The ruthless bullets were all sprayed towards Su Han. At this moment, many strange thoughts suddenly appeared in Su Han's mind. If, today, Su Han is just an ordinary person. He has no physical mutation or venom possession. He is just an ordinary person. Then he will die miserably under these bullets. His relatives will face the pain of losing him, and even his parents will be unable to bear it and collapse. If he has a wife, if he has children, what should he do with his wife and children? When he thought of these, an unknown fire surged from the bottom of his heart. Did I mess with you? Su Han cursed angrily and rushed out before even waiting for the poison to take possession of him. At this moment, Su Han just relied on the anger in his heart and instinctively wanted to crush these scum into mud. Then, he really did it. I saw him turning into an afterimage, shuttling back and forth among these people. In less than 10 seconds, all these people fell to the ground. Everyone's face was screwed up to their backs irregularly. Wow, little Susu, your speed, your strength, and your reaction ability are so great. It's even as good as if you were possessed by me. Venom's shocked voice sounded. Only then did Su Han realize that he had killed these people with his bare hands without being possessed by Venom. He counted them carefully, and there were 12 in total. Hiss. After he reacted, he took a sharp breath of air. Overnight, he became so powerful. Su Han himself was shocked. What followed was ecstasy. After all, this is the Marvel world where geniuses and madmen run rampant, and technology and magic coexist. If you are not careful, you will die without a burial place. The stronger he is, the greater his chance of saving his life. How could Su Han be unhappy? He looked at his fists, with a trace of cruelty hanging from the corners. Since you can become stronger through devouring, what else do you need to worry about? Just eat. I'm hungry, Venom, let's start your feast. Receive. As soon as the words fell, Su Han's body surface immediately began to be covered with a layer of black mucus, and in an instant, the Venom immediately possessed him. On the head like a braised egg, the dense white teeth look ferocious but also somewhat cute. I saw him grabbing a few guys on the ground, opening his bloody mouth, and swallowed them directly. Strangely enough, after Su Han swallowed three symbiotes yesterday, his stomach was so bloated that it was about to burst. But today Su Han ate so much food in the cafeteria, but he didn't feel satisfied at all. Even now that the venom was beginning to engulf these guys, he didn't feel the slightest discomfort. It seems that the evolution of the body included the carrying capacity and digestive capacity of the stomach. After eating so much food, I didn't feel the slightest bit of excitement. This gave Su Han the illusion that he had become a food melting pot, and he could eat everything in an instant. Ow, ow. Venom gnawed the food without hesitation, and squirted as he ate, looking very naive. Soon, the surrounding food was eaten clean by the venom. How's it going? Are you not so hungry? Venom asked. Um, although Su Han didn't want to admit it, eating meat was indeed more satiating than eating donuts and pizza. Huh. As soon as he was full, Su Han immediately let out a sigh. This time, I can feel that there is indeed a warm power in my body. It is swimming around in my body and then being absorbed by my limbs, muscles and bones. Su Han said. After hearing this, Venom immediately. 
Hee hee, I said that you have unintentionally started a certain high-end evolutionary mechanism of human beings. The reason why you are so hungry is because your body needs a huge amount of energy to evolve. As long as you keep eating, you will evolve rapidly until you reach the limit of your current life form. In other words, you will transcend your human first life form and enter your second life form. Su Han's eyes lit up. The first thing that came to his mind was the immortals and gods who live as long as heaven and earth. However, he only had a momentary thought. After all, that is still far away from him. The current problem is, solve the problem of hunger first. He looked back at the fishman port behind him. At this time, the fishman port was already in chaos, with countless casualties. Venom also squeaked with unsatisfied content, and then said, Although I have eaten so much meat, now we only consume enough for two people, and I am not full. What he meant was to go get some more meat to eat. Su Han immediately said, Go. Venom received Su Han's permission and immediately let out a roar, then jumped up, climbed up the surrounding buildings, and ran towards the main battlefield of Fishman Port. However, when he climbed up the tall building in front of the port, he met an acquaintance. On top of the tall building, a man wearing a close-fitting spider suit was hanging upside down in the air, constantly spraying out spider silk to contain the militants. Su Han was stunned. He almost shouted, Peter. Then I realized that he was now possessed by Venom, and Peter had already put on the suit and transformed into Spider-Man. Su Han saw Peter, and Peter saw him. Su Han knew it was Peter, but Peter didn't know it was Su Han. When he first saw Venom's ferocious appearance, he instantly gave up attacking the militants and instead rushed towards Venom. Whoosh whoosh. A few strands of spider silk flew like arrows. Su Han became playful and wanted to compete with Peter. He immediately said to Venom, play with him. Okay. Venom received the order and immediately ejected, avoiding the spider thread, and then a long tentacle quickly separated from his body and wrapped around Peter. Venom and Spider-Man are both highly agile heroes. High-rise buildings have become their main battlefield. Peter has spider silk and can fly over walls. Su Han has mucus and can walk on flat ground in high-rise buildings. The two of them went back and forth, fighting for a long time. All of Spider-Man's methods are focused on capturing, and he rarely has lethal abilities. And Su Han knew that the other party was Peter, and he didn't kill him, so when you came and went, all he consumed was physical strength, and neither of us was hurt. However, their fight was clearly captured in drone aerial photography, and the whole of San Francisco and even the United States clearly saw their fight. San Francisco, Life Foundation, Symbiote Research Institute. Carlton and Drake were sitting in the office watching the battle between Peter and Su Han. Carlton and Drake are doctors of symbiote research, bosses of the Life Foundation, and hosts of the symbiote riot. Venom, he's not dead yet. Carlton hammered the table hard, and the next second, a ferocious and cruel face condensed on his back. It is the symbiote riot. HMPH, this traitor, I thought he and Eddie would perish together, but I didn't expect that he is still alive. Morning. You lead a team of people to kill this traitor. As soon as the words fell, a team of people immediately appeared outside Carlton's office. A total of 24 people, each with a head condensed from the symbiote on their back. As commanded. In the Fishman port, the battle between Su Han and Peter continues, but the militants have been eliminated. Su Han took a look at the current situation and immediately said to Venom, It's almost done, we can prepare to withdraw. Meeting Spider-Man was a complete accident, and Su Han got his wish and competed with him. Although they were apparently evenly matched, Su Han knew that he was much better than Peter. Because Venom didn't use any fatal moves, he was giving in to Peter to a certain extent. After receiving Su Han's instructions, Venom quickly found an opportunity to distance himself from Spider-Man. Friend, I have something to do today, let's fight next time. After Venom finished speaking, he turned around to leave. However, before he finished speaking, Venom suddenly stiffened and his eyes looked towards the street below. On the street, several luxury cars quickly drove into the fishman port, and then 24 big men got out of the cars. These big men all looked up at Su Han. It's a symbiote. Venom immediately smelled the scent of his kind permeating the air. Su Han's evolution has also strengthened his abilities to a certain extent. Even from such a distance, Venom could smell the symbiote's scent. What to do? 
Withdraw or fight? Venom asked Su Han. Su Han pondered for a moment, and then conveyed a cold thought to Venom, that is, kill. Good. There was also a hint of excitement in Venom's voice, and several tentacles immediately separated from his body and began to climb the wall, moving quickly. If you want to run away, there's no way. Among the twenty people below, an extraordinarily tall black man sneered. He is the person responsible for this hunting operation, named, Morning. He is one of the most capable men in the riot. He saw Venom turn around and thought he was going to escape. Brothers, chase after me. As the sound of morning fell, mucus of different colors instantly appeared on the surface of the 24 big men, and the transformation was completed almost in an instant. 20 symbionts began to grow tentacles, then climbed up the wall and quickly chased Su Han. Su Han was not running away, he was just moving the fighting venue. And the place he chose was the super large crane at the fishman port pier. At Su Han's signal, Venom quickly climbed onto the crane and reached the top steel beam. From this location, you can almost overlook most of San Francisco. Likewise, almost half of San Francisco can see him. Susu, what do you want to do? Climb into this place to kill people. Do you want to become a public enemy? Venom's arrival on Earth is long gone. He also knows the truth that, if you want to live a long time, you have to keep a low profile as much as possible. However, Su Han slowly revealed half of his face, and his face was filled with an unknown smile. So what if we are public enemies? Someone has to remind everyone that you symbiotes have invaded the earth, right? Oh, it turns out you had this idea. If that's the case, then this is really a perfect hunting ground. While the two were chatting, 24 symbiotes had climbed onto the crane and rushed towards Su Han. Venom, I leave it to you. Kill them all, eat them all, and try to be as scary as possible. Su Han said. No problem. Venom laughed ferociously, then roared and began to counterattack towards the first target. Meanwhile, people across San Francisco are keeping a close eye on Venom's situation. Major media also quickly sent reporters to shoot on sight. But soon, they were shocked by what they saw. I saw the Venom transforming into a devil from hell. Sometimes his dark body turned into a giant axe, ruthlessly cutting one symbiote in half, and sometimes it turned into a spear, ruthlessly skewering another symbiote into skewers. However, no matter what the killing method is, the venom will eventually grab the body of the deceased, stuff it into the center and chew it up. The blood and flesh flowed out along his big white teeth, and it was extremely disgusting and terrifying. Ah, ah, the people watching below were holding on to the wall and vomiting. After all, this scene is too bloody and cruel. What was even more terrifying was that they were shocked to find that although there was only one person on one side, there were 24 on the other side. But it was the party of 24 who were brutally massacred. In S.H.I.E.L.D., a black man wearing an eye patch watched the scene of Venom killing the symbiote through a live webcast, frowning. Stark Industries, Tony and Stark were also watching this scene. He was originally eating steak, but when he saw Venom eating the bodies of his fellow humans, he glanced at the steak in front of him, and then silently put down his knife and fork. The Life Foundation, Symbiote Research Institute, and Carlton Riot were also looking at the same scene, and he was shaking with anger. Venom, he is actually devouring his own clan. It is an unforgivable crime. Come here, convey this news to the symbiotes lurking around the world. I want them to know the consequences of violating clan rules. On this day, the fishman port became the focus. On this day, Venom instantly became famous and became a hell demon in the eyes of the world. The scene in which he slaughtered and devoured 24 alien creatures has been deeply imprinted in everyone's hearts. But these are irrelevant to Su Han. After the Venom swallowed the 24 symbiotes, he immediately jumped down and quickly left the fishman port. Back at the rental house, Su Han had just changed his clothes when Peter's voice immediately sounded in the corridor. Su Su, I'm back. I brought you pizza. Su Han opened the door and immediately saw Peter standing at the door holding a box of pizza, his face full of exhaustion. Peter had a big battle with him today, which consumed a lot of energy, so he was so tired. Su Han smiled knowingly, took the pizza, and thanked him. Peter, why don't you stop working part-time in the future and just go to school with peace of mind? I'll find a way to pay for your living expenses. 
Peter was very kind to him, and Su Han wanted to repay him. When Peter heard this, he glanced at Su Han in surprise, and then smiled warmly. Thank you, but no, just take care of yourself. After saying this, Peter went back to his room. Su Han also immediately closed the door, and then sneaked out from the window of the room. Venom, help me find a place with few people. I need to digest the life force in my body. No problem. Su Han got the vitality of 24 symbionts in one breath today, and now he urgently needs a quiet place to digest them. If he were at home, Su Han would be afraid of making too much noise and causing unnecessary trouble. Possessed by the venom, Su Han quickly came to a field park in San Francisco. The biggest feature of Shidi Park is the forest, and Venom rushed into the forest. This place is quite quiet. Okay, let's go here. Su Han regained control of his body. He sat cross-legged under a big tree, and then allowed the huge vitality in his body to wash over his limbs. When he absorbed it for the first time, Su Han fainted directly, but now, Su Han felt the swelling and pain. Everything fell into place, and all the vitality flowed through Su Han's body like gurgling water, nourishing Su Han's skeletal muscles. In the night, Su Han's body began to emit an emerald green light. Then, string like green tentacles stretched out from Su Han's body and slowly wrapped Su Han's body. In just a moment, a green cocoon formed on Su Han's body. Ah, uh, what's going on? Su Han looked at the green cocoons on his body with a confused look on his face. It should be your body that is about to undergo its first evolution. I don't really understand the evolution process of you humans. Venom said. After hearing this, Su Han's eyes flashed. Evolution. This is a word full of expectations, and he is also looking forward to what changes will happen after he evolves. However, Su Han then felt his eyelids become heavy and a strong sense of tiredness came over him, and then he slowly closed his eyes. The next day. The entire site park was cordoned off, and outside the cordon there were city guards. Many people and reporters were blocked by city guards outside the cordon, and could only take a photo from a distance with their mobile phones. God, this is a miracle. People were taking photos and marveling. All just because the forest in front of me has changed dramatically. Yesterday there were just ordinary trees in the forest, but early this morning, the trees in this forest doubled in size overnight. All the trees have turned into towering trees. Of course, the most amazing thing is not these trees, but the creatures in the forest. According to the citizens who first discovered the abnormal changes here, the small animals in the forest also turned into giants overnight. Just when everyone was taking photos with great enthusiasm, a harsh animal cry suddenly sounded. Then, a strong wind howled and stopped. Then, the sky suddenly darkened. Everyone looked up in horror, and immediately found a bird and beast that was three times the size of the airplane appearing above their heads. The strong wind was caused by the flapping of its wings, and the roar of the beast was also caused by its cry. This sudden scene completely shocked everyone. If such a huge bird flew into a human city, it would only need to flap its wings hard enough to set off a huge storm and bring huge disasters to human cities. When everyone saw this big bird, they all held their breath and concentrated, feeling heavy in their hearts and stuffy in their chests. The pressure this big bird put on them was too great. However, just when everyone was shocked by the momentum of the big bird, the forest roared again, and accompanied by the shaking of the earth, the dull sounds seemed to be trampling on people's chests, making it difficult to breathe. Difficulty. Everyone followed the sound and saw another huge creature appearing in the forest. It turned out to be a bear. A hopelessly huge brown bear. The brown bear with all four hooves on the ground is at least 60 meters tall, and the hairs on its huge body are like spears. The eyes are like lanterns, and the exposed fangs are like two giant scimitars, which is very scary. Roar. It seemed to have discovered the humans under its feet, and immediately let out a roar, and then rushed towards the people. Ah, run away. The people instantly fell into panic and began to flee in all directions. The city guards took out their sidearms and started shooting at the brown bears. However, these thermal weapons, which can pose a fatal threat to most creatures, are ineffective against brown bears, at least weapons of this level are ineffective against it. After all, the power of a pistol is limited. Hitting a brown bear is no different than a mosquito bite. The brown bear, on the other hand, 
rushed into the crowd with three steps and two steps. With a quick glance, dozens or hundreds of onlookers became his food. The scene immediately turned bloody. Seeing the brown bear entering uninhabited territory and starting to kill ordinary people, a figure fell from the sky. Whoosh, whoosh, boom. The person wearing metal armor sprayed blue flames from his feet, standing high in the sky, and his palms turned into cannon muzzles, constantly attacking the brown bear. It is the famous Iron Man Tony and Stark. I saw him quickly firing cannonballs one after another, concentrating the fire on the brown bear, causing the brown bear to roar. His weapons were much more advanced than these city guards, and naturally more powerful. Soon, some horrific wounds began to appear on the brown bear's body. However, what is shocking is that as soon as wounds appeared on the brown bear, Tony and Stark immediately discovered that these wounds were healing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Hey, how could this happen? Seeing such a scene, he was also quite surprised. At this time, a transparent silk thread shot from a distance and landed on a big tree not far from him, and then he saw an elegant figure flying in the sky, still holding the spider thread in his hand. Shockingly Spider-Man arrived. Spider-Man and Iron Man looked at each other, then nodded to each other. Obviously this was not the first time the two met, so there was no tense atmosphere. What's the situation? Spider-Man asked. Iron Man glanced at Spider-Man, and then replied, This morning someone discovered that the trees in the park had skyrocketed overnight, and the creatures in the forest were also found to be the same. Then they reported it to the judiciary, and the National Security Bureau immediately dispatched all the city guards in San Francisco. We secured the place and sent a search team to search. According to the results, a mysterious life source appeared in this park. Ahem, life source is the name I personally chose. In short, this life source can emit very pure life essence. This is why this caused changes in this forest and the creatures in the forest. I came to help the country and get rid of this source of life. However, before I saw the source of life, I met this stupid bear first. The stupid bear Iron Man is talking about is undoubtedly this brown bear with terrifying self-healing ability. Spider-Man glanced at the brown bear, and then said, In that case, then go to the source of life, and leave it to me. Iron Man glanced at Spider-Man, thought for a moment, and finally nodded. Okay, then I'll leave this place to you. Just be careful. After saying that, Iron Man swooped and flew high into the sky. Just the next second, he flew back again. Your clothes are too, weak. Next time I will design a more powerful one for you. After saying that, Iron Man ignored Spider-Man's ecstasy and flew away again, heading towards the center of the forest. Spider-Man was still immersed in Iron Man's talk about designing clothes for him, but he only heard the brown bear roar, and then turned around and ran towards the center of the forest. Not only that, in the sky, the big bird that just flew away also brought a shadow that covered the sky and the sun, and flew towards the center of the forest again. San Francisco Land Park Center. There were several times more city guards here than outside, forming a circle around the center of the forest. And in this circle, there is a huge pit. Within the pit, an emerald green cocoon is emitting gleaming light. More than a dozen scientists are carrying out various data analysis and research on the cocoon with sophisticated electronic equipment. Their faces were full of excitement and excitement. A miracle, this is definitely a miracle. This green thing turns out to be the essence of life force. As long as we get a little bit, we can rejuvenate the old and heal the sick. This is a treasure, this is the essence of life. The scientists' analysis cheered up the spirits of several accompanying executives. Very good. If we take this thing back and make it into a healing medicine and put it into the war, why worry about our great empire not being able to frighten other countries and become the king of kings? These remarks immediately made these scientists change their expressions slightly. The senior official seemed to realize that he had accidentally spoken out what was on his mind, and immediately coughed easily, and then glared at the scientists. These scientists immediately bowed their heads and remained silent, continuing to study the baby in the circle. Sir, from the monitoring point of view, this thing does not pose a threat. We can move it directly. When the officer heard this, he was overjoyed and immediately shouted to several city guards, you, and you, bring a team of people in and put the baby on a rope. We will have a helicopter to transport it later. As you command, sir. 
The team of city guards immediately performed a military salute, then entered the cordon and walked towards the glowing green cocoon. There were a total of six people in this group, all holding ropes in their hands. They gradually approached the cocoon, and then reached out to grab it. Stop. In the sky, Iron Man flew towards here quickly. But his shouting failed to stop the six people's movements. As soon as their hands touched the green cocoon, a terrifying scene happened. The bodies of the six people froze. The next second, their bodies were immediately decomposed and then turned into countless particles, which were absorbed by the green cocoon. Such a terrifying scene shocked the scientists and the officer. Asshole, didn't you say there's no danger? The officer pointed at the scientist who just said there was no danger and cursed. The scientist had already been frightened into the ground. But at this moment, the monitoring instruments in the hands of these scientists made a crisp beeping sound. Hiss, sir, something is wrong. The detector shows that there are signs of life in that thing. As another scientist exclaimed, everyone turned to look at the detector. I saw a scanned image constantly refreshing on a monitor, and a red dot was flashing in the image. Let me see. Iron Man fell to the ground, revealing his handsome face. He walked in and took a look, with a trace of worry in his eyes. Then he took out a small instrument from his body and threw it onto the green silkworm cocoon. Drop. The small instrument immediately adhered to it, and a projection immediately appeared on Tony and Stark's hands. What is manifested in the projection is the situation in the green silkworm cocoon. Hiss, this, turns out to be an image of a person. Iron Man whispered. Is it some kind of alien creature? Just when he was also confused, the ground began to tremble again. Iron Man's expression changed slightly, and when he looked back, he immediately saw the huge brown bear running towards him. The appearance of the brown bear immediately caused great panic. Iron Man didn't care about anything else and soared into the air again to intercept. I don't know why this bear suddenly turned around and ran back. Spider-Man, who followed closely behind, immediately said to Iron Man. Roar. The brown bear roared angrily, and then rushed toward the crowd regardless of his own safety. Iron Man tried his best to intercept, but his weapon hit the opponent. Although it could cause a lot of damage, it would soon start to heal itself, and it would be intact in a few seconds. Who? At the same time, a high-pitched bird cry sounded, and then a huge shadow appeared that covered the sky and the sun. The roaring wind followed closely behind, directly uprooting the huge trees and sweeping them away. Boom. The huge bird landed on the ground and stood guard in front of the green cocoon. The brown bear also abandoned the enemy and appeared behind the green cocoon. The two super invincible behemoths came back to protect this green cocoon. Iron Man and Spider-Man were shocked when they saw this scene. This thing is definitely not simple. I need to report the situation to Nick. Iron Man immediately began to contact One-Eyed Nick, the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. As soon as the call was connected, One-Eyed Nick's voice immediately rang, Tony, I'll be there soon. You can control the situation a little first. At this moment, when the outside world began to have a huge impact because of the green cocoon, Suhan was lying in the cocoon contentedly, playing with his fingers. Oh, it's so boring. When will evolution be completed? Since the green tentacles emerging from his body formed a cocoon last night, he has been sleeping in the cocoon. When I woke up early in the morning, the cocoons were still there and my body didn't seem to have changed much. However, he unexpectedly discovered that he had an extra piece of language data in his brain. And what he just said was clearly not English, Chinese, or even any language on earth. Master, don't worry, it won't take long. A raging voice sounded in Su Han's head out of thin air. Hey, Shang Da, are you back? Su Han was particularly happy when he heard Shang Da's voice. Shang Da, that's the name given by Su Han. As soon as he woke up this morning, Su Han found that he had an extra piece of language information in his mind. Then he heard a strange voice appear in his mind. After some exchanges, Su Han was shocked to know that the thing talking to him turned out to be a bear. This surprised Su Han. When can bears talk? But then he realized that it was not the bears that could talk, but that he could understand the animals. Only then did Su Han realize that he had mastered a very strange ability after evolving this time that is, he could understand animal language. Therefore, Su Han named the bear Shang Da. As soon as Shang Da's voice fell, another voice also rang. 
Master, I'm back too. Su Han grinned when he heard this. This voice belongs to that big bird. Su Han also named it, Grumpy. He originally wanted to call it Angry Bird, but Su Han thought the name was too long and difficult to pronounce, so he changed his name to Grumpy. Grumpy, you're back too. Didn't you say you were going out to look for food? Master, you may not know it yet, but you have been discovered by humans. Many humans have surrounded you. They must be planning to capture you, then chop off your paws and make them into bear paws. It is also possible to take off your skin and make it into a coat. Wipe. Shang Da's thinking is a little miraculous. But Su Han can also understand, after all, he is a bear. After hearing what Shang Da said, Grumpy said unwillingly. How do you know that the master is a bear? Maybe the master is a bird like me. We birds don't have our claws chopped off to make bear paws. At most, we strip off the fur and bake it. Su Han immediately shouted, stop. He touched his forehead and felt several bumps on his forehead. Now, listen up, your master, I am neither a bear nor a bird. And you are no longer an ordinary bear or ordinary bird. You are now my pet. From today on, Mr. Shang, you must look like a bear. You can no longer eat and sleep like before. You must be the king of beasts and lead the beast clan well. The same goes for having a bad temper. You also need to be like a bird. From now on, everything running on the ground will be under the control of the bear, and everything flying in the sky will be under your control. Do you understand? Clear. Shang Da and Grumpy responded in unison. Then Su Han frowned slightly. He couldn't see the situation outside now. This green cocoon not only blocked his sight, but also seemed to block his hearing. So he really doesn't know that he is surrounded now. But then he thought about it and probably understood. Someone must have discovered his evolution in this forest. After all, a green cocoon appearing out of thin air in a forest will definitely attract attention. It seems that after the evolution is completed, I will have to be possessed by Venom to prevent my true appearance from being discovered. Venom's identity has been exposed, but Su Han's has not. Su Han also wanted to live a peaceful life and not be hunted every day, so it was necessary to maintain his identity. So, another 10 minutes or so passed. Su Han, who was bored, finally felt some slight changes in his body. He felt some numbness in his body and limbs, and then he saw that his hands and feet were shrinking slightly. Nima. Su Han was shocked. But soon, this change stopped. At the same time, Su Han also discovered that the green cocoon on his body had finally begun to melt. The green cocoon began to turn into green tentacles again, and then penetrated into Su Han's skin. Su Han understood that this was the end of evolution. Venom, come out. Okay. The green cocoon was melting, and the venom covered Su Han's face almost at the same time. Out. Outside, Iron Man and Spider-Man also noticed the changes in the green cocoon. They all stared attentively. When all the green cocoons disappeared, what appeared in front of them was the extremely ferocious venom. It's you. Spider-Man looked at venom in surprise. Iron Man was also quite surprised, obviously he didn't expect the person in the green cocoon to be venom. Shet, my life source turns out to be this big ugly monster. Iron Man muttered, but Su Han, who had excellent hearing, still heard it. Ha, you said I'm ugly. Very good, I'll take note of it. Su Han muttered secretly. Then Su Han turned to Bang Bao and shouted, Little Bao Bao, let's go. Hula. Grumpy immediately spread his wings. With a wingspan of nearly 50 meters, he flapped his wings vigorously. The surrounding area immediately flew with sand and rocks, trees fell and people were turned over. Venom jumped and was on Grumpy's back in an instant. And Grumpy can also take off into the air and fly directly into the sky. However, it was greeted by an extremely huge flying aircraft carrier. On top of the aircraft carrier, several surface-to-air missiles had already locked onto it. Hold the grass, it's S.H.I.E.L.D.'s flying aircraft carrier. Is it such an exaggeration? They actually sent out the flying aircraft carrier to attack me. Su Han felt dizzy as soon as he saw the flying aircraft carrier. Although his temper is quite big, he still looks extremely weak compared to the flying aircraft carrier. Little Bao Bao, we're not as big as him, so let's compare our speeds and charge the duck. Su Han immediately gave orders to Grumpy. Grumpy immediately let out a sharp cry, his wings fluttered faster, who, who. 
The huge wings made a dull sound, and then carried Su Han quickly past the flying aircraft carrier and fled into the distance. Wow! Su Han sat on Gumpy's back, as warm as a mountain. Although temper is flying rapidly, you can't feel any turbulence when doing it. It was the first time for Su Han to fly high in the sky so realistically, and he couldn't help but roar with excitement. Grumpy took him flying quickly away from the wetland park and towards the downtown area of San Francisco. When the grumpy giant figure appeared in San Francisco, people all over the city were terrified and screaming. Grumpy's huge figure is too terrifying for ordinary humans. Just a slight flap of its huge wings will surely blow a whirlwind in the city. Grumpy will occasionally lower his stature, making the enclave slightly lower. Whenever this happens, the glass windows on those high-rise buildings will immediately erupt with a clear and crisp sound of explosion, and then turn into glass shards all over the sky and sprinkle on the ground, which is very gorgeous. Haha, ha, it's so cool. Su Han revealed half of his real face, spread his hands, and fully felt the joy of flying freely. Although this trip to a human city caused a lot of trouble for the people in the city, it was still worth it. However, before Su Han had enough excitement, several, followers, appeared behind him. They are Iron Man Tony and Stark, Spider-Man Peter and Parker, the stealth plane of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and a black man with steel wings. Su Han frowned when he saw him. This man is called Falcon, and his real name is Anthony McKay. He is also a person with superpowers. It's just that his superpower is a bit useless, that is, he can communicate with bird creatures. Letting him communicate with Grumpy is definitely a good decision. Someone from S.H.I.E.L.D. should have sent him to control his bad temper. Sure enough, the appearance of the Falcon immediately gave Grumpy a big reaction. Master, that person can hear me just like you. When Su Han heard this, the corners of his lips rose. What did he say? Ah, he told me to leave you and follow him. He would take care of me and give me a carefree life. Oh, you are so brave, you dare to abduct my bird. Su Han gently touched the feathers on Grumpy's neck, and then said, Little Grumpy, kill him. As you command, master. After receiving Su Han's order, the grumpy figure suddenly stopped, then turned around, his whole body standing upright like a human. I saw it suddenly flapping its wings, making a few whirring sounds, and the whirlwind stirred up by its wings instantly condensed into the shape of a small tornado. Oops. Iron Man, Spider-Man, Falcon and others behind him did not expect that the big bird would suddenly make such a move. They were caught off guard and were directly swept up by the strong wind. In an instant, they fell in different directions like kites with broken strings. Iron Man slammed into a tall building, causing a huge explosion. Spider-Man managed to stabilize his body with the help of the spider silk, but he could only stick to the wall and did not dare to move at all. The Falcon's steel wings seemed to have been severely damaged, billowing smoke was coming out, and it had lost its ability to fly. The worst thing is S-H-I-E-L-D's stealth plane. The plane was swept away by the strong wind and lost its balance. It slammed into Fisherman's Harbor and finally fell into the sea. Well done. Su Han gave Tantrum a thumbs up. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Grumpy screamed with joy when he saw that he had killed so many enemies at once. Okay, enough playing, let's go home. Su Han slapped Grumpy on the neck, and Grumpy immediately spread his wings and flew high. This time, they were flying in the direction of Asia. Su Han has his own plans for Tantrum and Shang Da. That is to hide them in China. Although these two guys accidentally absorbed the life force escaping from their own bodies, that's why they mutated into this. But no matter what, it was Su Han who created them, and Su Han had the obligation to be responsible for them. What's more, these two big guys are now ferocious prehistoric beasts, and they will be of great use if they are kept hidden them in the United States. With the urinary behavior of the top officials in the United States, they will definitely search the country, dig them out, arrest them, and study them. Therefore, hiding in the Washa Kingdom is the best choice. After all, the Washa Kingdom has a vast territory and rich resources. If they hide in the forest, they will never be found easily. Another thing is that whether it is the real world or the Marvel world, China has the ability to compete with the United States. Hide them in China so that the United States will not dare to search across the border at will. Washa Kingdom, Forest Sea and Snowfield in the Northeast. Grumpy, 
Big Bear, you two will hibernate here for the time being. Remember, don't hurt anyone at will, and don't hunt too much, do you understand? Clear. Grumpy and Shangda responded very well. Su Han didn't stay long, and quickly left there after giving instructions. Three days later, Su Han returned to San Francisco. As soon as he returned to the rental house, Su Han heard the landlord knocking on the door in the corridor. Dong dong dong. The landlord knocked on Peter's door. This kid has been avoiding me for many days. If he doesn't pay the rent, believe it or not, I will kick him out on the street. Su Han frowned after hearing this. Peter owes rent. In my memory, Peter seems to be the poorest superhero in all of Marvel. But Su Han didn't expect that Peter would be too poor to pay the rent. He immediately touched his pocket and found $500. This was what he had left after robbing a few gangsters in China and buying plane tickets. After opening the door, Su Han shouted. Landlord, how much rent does Peter owe you? Two months, 400. The landlord held up four fingers. This landlord is a typical American. Middle-aged, obese, wearing big pants and slippers, extremely greasy. Su Han handed over 400. From now on, you can take care of his rent and I'll be fine. Don't bother him. Su Han said to the landlord. The landlord looked at Su Han in surprise. Su Han then thought about it and gave him the remaining $100. Don't tell him that I paid it for him. Just say that he studies hard and the rent is reduced. If you can do this, I will give you $500 a month. How about that? $500. When the landlord heard that Su Han was going to give him $500 a month, his eyes immediately lit up. No problem, I promise not to say a word, and I will prepare breakfast for him. Su Han smiled slightly and reached an agreement with the landlord. As soon as the landlord left, Peter came back. When he saw Su Han at home, he was immediately overjoyed. Su, where have you been these past few days? I thought you were taken away by that big bird. Su Han knew that Peter was teasing him. But he still pretended to be surprised. Big bird, what big bird? I haven't been in San Francisco for the past three days. Wow, you don't know about big bird. Peter was immediately interested. Well, I'll take you to a show tonight and tell you about Big Bird. Watching a show. Su Han remembered that Peter had a crush on a classmate named Mary J, who was an actress. Su Han's lips curled up and he nodded in agreement. That night, Su Han really followed Peter to the theater to watch the show. Everything was just as he thought. Peter was going to see Mary J's show. Let me tell you, that Big Bird is bigger than an airplane and it can blow up a tornado with just one flap of its wings. The most terrifying thing is the alien creature that controls the big bird. Tisk tisk, it's very uneasy outside recently, you but be careful, don't get eaten by monsters. Su Han listened to Peter holding the big bird for him with relish, and secretly felt happy in his heart. If Peter knew that Su Han was the alien monster, he called, he didn't know what his reaction would be. While the two were chatting, the performance was already over. Su Han immediately pushed Peter, the performance is over, why don't you go backstage to see your goddess? Peter looked stunned, with a bit of shyness on his face. Forget it, I didn't bring anything with me. It wouldn't be good to just go like this. Peter is so poor now that he doesn't even have money to buy a flower. When Su Han heard this, he smiled mysteriously and looked towards the entrance of the theater. It just so happened that the flower delivery person from the florist came in time. Sir, these are the flowers you ordered. Peter looked at Su Han in surprise. After Su Han took the flowers, he gave them to Peter again. No, the flowers are here, go see your goddess. Thanks, brother. Peter picked up the flowers and walked excitedly backstage. However, when Peter walked backstage, the scene in front of him froze him. I saw a man wearing an officer's uniform holding Mary and Jay in his arms. And Mary and Jay were surrounded by several large and beautiful flower baskets. Su Han looked at the lonely Peter and sighed slightly in his heart. This fool, when he first gained power, his uncle died due to an accident, and he was mentally injured for several years. After having a crush on the goddess, he went through many twists and turns, but in the end he still failed to win the beauty back. Not to mention being poor all his life, his relationship is still so ups and downs. If Su Han didn't have any contact with him, then forget it. 
But after Su Han traveled to this world, Peter was his first friend. Returning a favor many times more. Su Han accompanied him to the show today because he wanted to change this boy's fate. So when he saw the scene in front of him, a sneer slowly appeared on his lips. He pushed Peter over and directly in front of Mary and Jay. Peter, are you here? This flower. When Mary and Jay saw Peter, their eyes lit up, and they immediately broke away from the officer man and walked to Peter. This small gesture made Su Han smile slightly. It can be seen that Mary and Jay still have a good impression of Peter. After all, Mary and Jay once confessed their love to Peter before, but Peter refused because of his identity as Spider-Man. Because he feels that being Spider-Man will have many enemies, and once these enemies threaten Mary and Jay, he will feel very uncomfortable. In Su Han's opinion, this is completely a woman's kindness. According to this, all superheroes should be single. So he started to become the assist king at this time. Hi, my name is Su Han. I'm Peter's friend. Peter and I came to see your performance. He likes you and wants to have a loving sport with you with your hair down. In order to assist Peter, Su Han even spoke in a pornographic voice. Peter and Mary were surprised when they heard this. Both of them were a little embarrassed, but they were also secretly happy. Su, don't talk nonsense. Peter was really shy. Su Han smiled slightly, but instead of stopping, he continued, Peter loves you, but he felt he was unable to protect you and refused you because he didn't want you to get hurt. He is a good man and you deserve it. This confession immediately made Mary and Jay's eyes widen. She held Peter's hand, and then asked sincerely, Peter, is it true? Do you love me? Peter had been pushed to the edge of the cliff by Su Han, and he had no room to retreat. He took a deep breath, put aside all worries, and replied, Yes, love Tiger Oil, are you willing to give me a chance and let us start again? When Su Han heard this, he breathed a sigh of relief. By helping him to this extent, he was doing his best. When things have reached this point, according to the normal development, Peter and Mary should immediately run to the hotel or home, and then have a landslide in tsunami style uh -oh 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 and then live happily together. But in fact, Mary, what are you doing? Don't forget that you are my fiancé. At this time, the officer man who had hugged Mary before rushed over and grabbed Mary's hand. This officer man is tall and strong. Judging from the epaulets, he is actually a lieutenant. For such a young lieutenant, he either performed amazingly in the army or his family was extremely wealthy. Either way, it shows that the identity of the person in front of you is not simple. Mary, you are my fiancé now. Please pay attention to your words and deeds, okay? And you, you are that loser Peter and Parker, right? Please don't bother my fiancé again, okay? We are about to get married. The officer man held Mary in his arms as if demonstrating. However, Su Han picked up a stool next to him with his backhand and threw it directly at it. Caught off guard, the man, an officer, was hit on the head and bleeding profusely. He shook slowly twice and finally fell down. Su Su. Peter didn't expect that Su Han would suddenly do something evil. Mary was even more horrified and at a loss. The entire crew backstage was in a panic. However, Su Han smiled calmly. Okay, no one will bother you now, just go and fall in love. Su Han grabbed the two of them and left. After leaving the theater, Su Han looked at the two of them with relief. Peter, Mary, life is short, cherish the moment, cherish the people in front of you. Don't waste your time, do something you love to do, I'm hungry, I'll go get something to eat myself. Su Han gave Peter a look like an old father. Peter is Spider-Man, and Su Han doesn't have to worry about their safety at all. Even if the officer really bothers him again, Peter will be able to handle it. Peter is actually very strong, but he often lacks a little courage and a little courage to break free from the shackles of the world. Now that Su Han has pushed him in the back, I believe he will change. After Su Han finished speaking, he left alone. Su Su, thank you, you have to be careful and don't get eaten by monsters. Peter behind him shouted in the distance. Su Han didn't look back, just raised his hand and waved. A mysterious smile appeared on the corner of his head. Don't be eaten by monsters. Ha ha, I am a monster, and I am the only one who eats them. Su Han walked to a deserted alley. After turning around and looking back to make sure no one was there, 
he suddenly stretched out his hand and pulled at his ear, then tore off a thin piece of dough. The face fell, and a handsome but somewhat childish face appeared. At the same time, Su Han also took off his shoes. As soon as the shoes were dragged on, Su Han's height immediately became shorter. At this time, Su Han looked at least two or three years younger than before. Oh, I didn't expect that the result of this evolution would be to make me grow in reverse. If the next evolution is still like this, I won't be able to maintain my original appearance and will have no choice but to leave Peter. As Su Han said this, he took off his clothes and put on a set of casual sportswear. Su Han's real age is 17. But now it seems that Su Han is only 14 years old, and he looks much younger. There is only one reason for this result, evolution. The cocoon evolution three days ago made his body grow reversely by three years. According to Venom, the human body is at its purest when it is just born. After birth, the human body becomes complex with age. This has to do with the air humans breathe and the food they eat. Of course, this kind of statement is also spread among Eastern monasticism. So Su Han didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Just one evolution made him three years younger. If he swallowed the symbiote a few more times and evolved a few more times, wouldn't he become a baby? However, the appearance change is only the most basic. Substantial change is real. During this evolution, Su Han not only mastered beast language, his body became younger, and his strength also increased dramatically. The three symbionts he swallowed for the first time enabled him to evolve, and his physical fitness doubled. The 24 symbiotes swallowed this time doubled his physical strength again. According to Venom's explanation, strengthening the human body is the same as losing weight. You may be able to lose 5 pounds in the first month. But if you want to lose another 5 pounds, you may need 3 months or 5 months. The further you get to the back, the more time it will take. Therefore, the two evolutions doubled the size, but one only required 3 symbionts, and the other required 24. Later, if Su Han still wants to evolve, he will need to swallow hundreds or thousands of symbionts. Of course, the power he gains will also increase rapidly. Now the physical fitness has doubled. Even without the venom, Su Han's own combat effectiveness has surpassed that of most special forces. The strength of one hand can hit hundreds of kilograms, which is far beyond ordinary people. Su Han believes that if he continues to evolve, he will eventually be like those big bosses in the Marvel world, or even surpass them. After changing his clothes, Su Han looked like a middle school student. He walked in the night on the streets of San Francisco, looking for the scent of the symbiote. In fact, he had discovered his target. After evolving again, the five senses were improved again. He has even been able to roughly capture how many symbiotes there are in San Francisco and where they are. About 20 minutes later, Suhan came to a bar in downtown San Francisco. The name of the bar is, Crazy Night. There were four tall bodyguards in black at the door. When Su Han saw these four bodyguards, the corners of his lips raised slightly, and he made a grunting sound unconsciously. Hey, where are you, you little brat? This is a bar. Miners are not allowed to enter. Moreover, this is a membership system and does not accept ordinary people. Su Han walked over, and the four bodyguards naturally blocked him outside. However, Su Han grinned, and then his eyes instantly turned into the, invincible white eyes, of Venom. The four bodyguards took a look and actually let him go. Su Han didn't say anything, but directly passed the four people and pushed in the door. As soon as he opened the door, Su Han, who had keen senses, smelled a pungent smell of blood, and the noisy music immediately filled his ears. Su Han walked inside and immediately saw the panoramic view of the inside of the bar. The bar is divided into an inner circle and an outer circle. The inner circle is the dance floor, and the outer circle is the bar and wine tables. However, the inner and outer circles of this bar are different from ordinary bars. Because, this is a symbiote bar. That's right, everyone in the bar is possessed by the symbiote. Su Han had already discovered this. Millions of symbiotes have sneaked into Earth's cities, and they will naturally have their own small circles, where they will also gather and eat. The bar in front of me is a symbiote club. A place for them to entertain and eat. Su Han looked around the whole process and immediately knew what was going on. There are nearly 200 symbiotes in total throughout the bar. Ha! 
Venom, are you ready? You can have a full meal tonight. Su Han said to Venom. Yeah, there's a lot of food. Venom's voice was also filled with excitement. Very good, then, let's get started. After Su Han finished speaking, Venom immediately began to take form. In an instant, the Venom possessed him successfully. He turned around and rushed towards the person next to him. Hiss. The man's limbs were separated in an instant, and then he was eaten clean by the Venom. The funny thing is that because the bar was too loud and these sympathies were using ordinary people as food, Venom's attack did not attract their attention. Venom did not hesitate and immediately transformed into a beast and began to hunt and prey crazily. In a matter of seconds, more than a dozen symbiotes had died in his hands. Only then did these symbionts finally react. No, it's Venom. Someone finally recognized Venom's identity. In an instant, the music stopped. Everyone gathered around him, surrounding Venom in the middle. And these people also manifested the appearance of the symbiote at almost the same time. Venom faced more than a hundred symbiotes on his own, but he didn't panic at all. He was even a little, excited. Venom, you traitor, you actually killed and devoured your own people. Today we are going to tear you into pieces. Everyone began to fight against Venom. Because Venom has indeed hunted a lot of symbiotes in recent times. Oh, tear me into pieces. Come on. Venom stretched out its big tongue, chirped, and dozens of tentacles suddenly appeared behind it, each of which turned into various weapons. These weapons emitted a cold light, then clattered and danced into flowers. The venom instantly turned into a minnow, and any symbiote that was no more than 10 meters away from him was instantly strangled. In just this one blow, the venom killed 30 or 40 symbiotes. The next battle was even more brutal. Venom's combat power far exceeded these ordinary symbionts. Venom solved the battle in less than 10 minutes. Wow, do you seem to be getting stronger. Su Han was also surprised that Venom could resolve the battle so easily. And it's one against a hundred. Hee hee, this is all thanks to your evolution. The more perfect your body evolves, the more I benefit from it as a fusion body. I even feel like I am about to evolve. Venom said as he began to eat the symbiote. It would take some time for him to completely devour so many symbiotes. About half an hour later. Hiccup. Venom patted his belly and burped contentedly. Don't forget, there are four more outside. Su Han reminded. I didn't forget. Venom took out his tongue and licked his big white teeth, and then walked out of the bar leisurely. At this time, in the bar, there was only a drop of blood and debris on the ground. Outside the bar, the four bodyguards were completely unaware. They were still standing calmly. Venom stepped forward, stretched out its tentacles from behind, directly rolled up the four people, and then cut them into pieces. After getting rid of the four people, Venom went directly to the fishman port in San Francisco. Su Han evolved after swallowing more than 20 symbionts last time. After devouring more than 200 this time, Su Han should evolve again. Therefore, Su Han needs a place where he will not be disturbed. The last time I chose the forest, I was discovered and made such a big fuss. This time, Venom plans to take Su Han to the bottom of the sea. Venom sneaked into the harbor dock quietly, then got a yacht and took Su Han directly out of the harbor. Boundless Sea. A lonely yacht floats on the sea. On the ship, Su Han's evolution has begun. I saw that his body once again gave birth to those emerald green buds. These buds gradually lengthened and turned into thin threads, and once again condensed into an emerald green cocoon. Su Han, who was in the cocoon, fell asleep again. Night. Silent desolation. When the night gradually dissipated and the white fish belly appeared in the east, Su Han also woke up quietly. However, when he opened his eyes and saw his body, he couldn't help but uttered, hold the grass. Zhou Sao, I'm so small again. Su Han stretched out his hands and feet. Immediately I found that my clothes and legs had grown a lot. Sure enough, every time you evolve, your body will get younger. Will you really become a baby at the end of your evolution? Su Han couldn't help but feel worried. If he becomes a baby, will he need to drink milk? The picture is so beautiful that I can't even see it. Su Han had a headache. However, the body did shrink, but the strength also increased. Su Han could feel the explosive power in his body. Sure enough, the purer the body, the greater the power. 
Just as he sighed that he was strong again, the green cocoon began to dissipate and finally returned to Suhan's body. Comfortable. Suhan stood up and stretched himself. At the same time, the sun was rising, and the bloody sunlight rose from the sea, which was particularly beautiful. Su Han took a deep breath, then walked to the edge of the yacht, and then made a crazy move. I saw him lifting his foot slightly, and then stepping on the void. Then, he actually took one step forward. A strange scene appeared. Su Han actually didn't fall. Instead, it just floated outside the yacht quietly. The second ability Su Han evolved, floating. Although Su Han didn't know why he had this ability, he felt as light as a cotton ball. He can walk on the air at will without being affected by gravity at all. He was like an immortal from Eastern legends, stepping on the void and walking thousands of miles. It's magical, but also exciting. Ooh, Su Han stretched out his hands and stepped on the void step by step, like a child walking on a single plank bridge. He is testing, researching, and exploring this new field. Flying is an ability that countless humans dream of. It's great. This is more awesome and classy than rock climbing and wall walking. Su Han was very happy, as happy as a child. In fact, he did become a child. Su Han is now only 8 or 9 years old. Compared to the last time, he was at least 4 or 5 years younger after evolving this time. In appearance, he still vaguely resembles Su Han's original appearance, but if he is not a familiar person, he will definitely not be able to recognize him. Su Han has completely gotten rid of his original appearance as a young man, and has become a Shota. Moreover, Su Han's skin also changed. Smooth, crystal white, as tender as tofu. If those ladies who love beauty see this, they will go crazy. Even Su Han's voice showed a slight change. It has degenerated back to the sound it had before development. This is living reverse growth. However, Su Han didn't mind at all. Because in terms of strength, Su Han now belongs to the extraordinary level. The skin is just an external manifestation, and strength is the foundation of survival. Su Han walked in the void step by step, light and elegant. After walking for a while, Su Han gradually became familiar with the feeling of being separated from the land. Then, he carefully came to the water. As soon as his foot fell, the calm sea surface rippled. But Su Han stood firmly. Wow! Su Han was filled with joy, and then he stepped on the water with both feet and started running on the water. At water escape, like an innocent boy, he actually recited some water-type ninja techniques from the famous anime Naruto, and also dubbed his own voice effects and performed various ninjutsu movements, which was extremely strange. In this way, he played around for a full hour before returning to the yacht. However, Venom spoke at this moment. Have you had enough? Then it's my turn. Then, the venom possessed him. In an instant, Su Han transformed into a symbiote form. I saw that venom, which was originally only 2 meters high, now turned into 2 and a half meters tall. The body surface was originally smooth mucus, but now the mucus vaguely outlines the appearance of tiny scales. Of course, this is only the first appearance, and only Su Han can see it clearly. To outsiders, it is still just some disgusting mucus. Have you evolved too? Su Han asked after seeing Venom's appearance. Venom replied, Yes, I have also evolved. My physical strength has doubled, and I have also evolved an ability that I didn't have originally. Do you want to see it? Venom chuckled. Don't be pretentious, just demonstrate the speed. The Venom cracked his big white teeth, and he was obviously smiling, but his appearance was uglier than a ghost. Watch it, Venom said. Then, there were just two crisp sounds, as if something broke out of the ground. Then, a pair of big fleshy wings suddenly appeared on Venom's back. The fleshy wings are completely black, with a wingspan of about 1.5 meters. They are not very huge, but combined with Venom's body shape, they are really domineering. Wow! Su Han exclaimed. Can you fly? Venom used to be able to use mucus to form wings, but such wings did not have the ability to fly. Can. After Venom finished speaking, a pair of fleshy wings flapped hard. Venom jumped into the air and rose in a straight line for hundreds of meters. This speed is terrifying. Hey, my evolution is completely based on the evolution of your body. Your body is my host. As you become stronger, I also become stronger accordingly. I have a feeling that even if I face it now I'm not afraid of the symbiote army anymore. 
Su Han evolved, and so did Venom. Overall, their combat power has increased by more than one level. With such power, Su Han is fearless even if he is one against a hundred, against a thousand, or even against ten thousand. Very good, very powerful. Su Han replied happily. However, just as he and Venom were testing their abilities, a private yacht in the distance slowly passed by. A young man and woman on the cruise ship were holding their mobile phones and trembling all over. On their mobile phones, a scene is being played repeatedly. That was the picture of Su Han being able to walk in the air and on the water without any support. At the end of the video, it was clearly captured that Su Han grew fleshy wings after transforming into Venom. Devil. Devil. The faces of this pair of young men were pale, and their lips turned purple from fear. They were a couple who originally wanted to have some romance and go out to sea to watch the sunrise. Unexpectedly, I happened to take a photo of Su Han under the sunrise. They trembled and uploaded the video to the video website. In an instant, the entire network was shocked, and the number of clicks and views increased at an explosive rate. As soon as the video was released, it instantly detonated the internet. Before, although everyone also took pictures of Venom killing symbiotes. But no one has ever photographed Venom in human form. And now, a high-definition version of the transformation process is clearly demonstrated in the video. Such Jinbao's scene naturally attracted countless people. Not only the number of clicks and views has increased rapidly, but the number of comments has also exploded. Everyone, please be careful about the people around you. Maybe your relatives and friends are also possessed by these demons. The next moment they are your friends, the next moment they will become demons that devour your flesh and blood. Wow, this is horrible, who can I believe? I think I need to go see my parents. Rumors spread, and panic instantly filled the hearts of all mankind. At the same time, Su Han, who has no idea that he has become an internet celebrity, is still enjoying the pleasure of flying. But the next moment, his cell phone rang. I just bought this phone yesterday, and only one person knows the number, and that's Peter. Su Han returned to the yacht, came into contact with the Venom possession, and then took out his mobile phone. When I opened it, it turned out to be Peter's message. Where are you? You haven't returned home all night. Mary and I are very worried about you. It's extremely unsafe outside. Following the message is a link to a video. Su Han opened it and saw that it was exactly what he had just seen. Shet. Su Han looked around, but there was no one around him. Just now, because he was busy testing his abilities and because of the thrill of trying to fly for the first time, his attention was all focused on this. The child did not notice anyone appearing around him. Careless. However, Su Han felt relieved afterwards. Peter had seen the video, but he didn't recognize it. This also shows that no one in this world knows who he is. If that's the case, what if the true face is photographed? With this thought, Su Han had nothing to worry about. Su Han immediately sent a message back to Peter. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. You have a good time with Mary. I, have to leave. Goodbye. Su Han's appearance has changed drastically now, and he has completely turned into a young lady. There was no way he would appear in front of Peter like this. So, he said goodbye to Peter. The next moment, Peter's messages started to arrive. What's the meaning? Are you leaving? Where? Are you traveling? How long? Where? And when will you come back? Alone. There is no doubt that Peter is a warm little boy, even so warm that he feels a little gay. But Su Han felt a kind of warmth inexplicably. After traveling into this strange world, at least I have a friend who cares about me. Satisfied. Su Han didn't reply to Peter's message. He even threw his phone into the sea. In this life, one will meet many people. Some people will become close friends, and some people will become mortal enemies. But most people are just passers-by in your life. After they stay in your life for a while, they will gradually fade out of your sight, leaving only a trace of their presence in your memory. You may occasionally think of them on a whim, but as time goes by, they will eventually dissipate. There are very few people who can truly accompany you through your entire life. After letting go of his concern for Peter, Su Han took a deep breath and then looked at the sea level. Now that my appearance has been exposed, there is no need for me to hide. It is time for me to have a true identity. Until now, he has been existing as an unknown character, living in obscurity. 
Now, Su Han wants to truly exist in the eyes of the world. So, he had a bold and dangerous idea. San Francisco. This warm mountain city full of sunshine and vitality brings people beautiful tourist scenery and cultural atmosphere. Especially in the morning, this mountain city looks vibrant under the rising sun. Fisherman's Wharf, as one of San Francisco's important hubs, is as lively as ever. Suddenly, a figure appeared on the sea in the distance. Because the figure was too small, everyone thought they had seen it wrong. After they looked carefully, they finally confirmed that it was really a person. Look, there's a man standing on the sea. I don't know who shouted this, instantly breaking the busyness of the fishman dock. Everyone stopped what they were doing and turned to look at the sea. Sure enough, a little boy appeared on the horizon. Although they were far away, everyone could really see it, it was a little boy. Compared with the surrounding cargo ships, that figure was too small. But at this moment, no one dared to ignore the figure that could ride the waves. Yes, it's the child in the video. Someone identified the boy. Yes, he is Su Han. From the moment the video was exposed, Su Han decided to make a shocking appearance. Now, he has come on the waves and appeared in front of the world in a very fantastic way, which is undoubtedly very shocking. In less than three minutes, everyone in the fishman port had their eyes fixed on Su Han. Su Han, on the other hand, walked slowly towards the fishman port as if strolling in a garden. God, the devil is coming. Is there anyone going to stop him? Where's Iron Man, where's Spider-Man? Only superheroes like them can stop that demon at this time. Wails came from the crowd. After all, Venom's two previous attacks left a very scary impression on everyone. That's a man-eating demon. That's the devil from hell. However, Iron Man and Spider-Man did not arrive, and another group of mysterious people appeared first. There are thousands of them, and their numbers are increasing rapidly. The appearance of these people immediately and forcefully surrounded the entire main channel of the Fishman port. Some people wanted to leave after reporting this, but were opposed. The people were immediately dissatisfied and came forward to argue. As a result, these people actually took action directly. I saw some sticky liquid suddenly appearing on these people's bodies. In an instant, all these people turned into, devils. There is no doubt that these thousands of people are all symbionts. When these people appeared to be in the same body, humans began to panic. However, these symbiotes did not perform Shalu on them. On the contrary, he was like a soldier, strictly guarding his position, as if waiting for his superior to arrive. In fact, their commander really came. I saw a customized Rolls Royce rushing toward Fisherman's Wharf with a dull roar. And those symbionts immediately made way for them. Finally, the car stopped in a very cool way. The car door opened, and a handsome but not sunny man got out. Suddenly it was Carlton, the host of the riot. After he got out of the car, his eyes immediately looked towards the sea. When he saw Su Han's figure, his pupils gradually shrank. In the end, he couldn't hold back the anger in his heart and completed the transformation directly. As soon as the riot broke out, he immediately jumped onto the tallest building in the fishman port, looking down like a god. Today, he summoned all the symbiotes from surrounding cities in order to kill Venom, the great traitor. Nick, the situation is not good. There are a lot of ooze monsters gathered here, close to 10,000, and there are more ooze monsters coming towards us. They seem to be in a civil war. We need to what to do. High in the sky, Iron Man had actually arrived a long time ago, but he was just observing the situation from a distance and did not step forward to attract other people's attention. At the same time, he also saw a light voice flying back and forth among the tall buildings in the city below. It's Spider-Man. Let's wait and see first to see if they have internal conflicts. It would be best if both of them kill each other. It would be best if they all die. In the communicator, one-eyed Nick said viciously. Recently, he has been very busy and worried about the Venom. The several appearances of Venom have brought great Shalu. Although they are all killing symbiotes, each symbiote has a host. The death of a symbiote means the death of a human being. So many people died, and the pressure on him from above was huge. That's why he wanted Venom and Riot to kill each other. Sir, you are too optimistic. Although the child, Ooze Monster, is very powerful, there are tens of thousands of Ooze Monsters on site. 
do you think it is possible to fight one against 10,000? Anyway, I don't believe it. Of. Iron Man's tone revealed 10,000 disbeliefs. He didn't believe that Su Han could fight against so many symbiotes. M. If there are really so many soft. Ooze monsters, they may not really be opponents. One-eyed Nick also said the same thing. The conversation between the two had nothing to do with Su Han and Riot. Su Han stepped on the waves step by step, and finally landed on the pier of the fishman port. However, what awaits him are tens of thousands of symbiotes led by Carlton, Riot. Venom, you traitor, you won't be able to escape today even if you are stabbed. Carlton shouted standing on top of the tall building. Su Han looked up at him and sighed slightly. Then he murmured to himself, run away, why should I run away? Master, I am grateful that you were hungry before it was too late. As Su Han spoke, Venom's figure gradually replaced him. Venom appeared, and its ferocious appearance immediately made people feel nervous. Venom GG smiled slyly and slapped his sinister white teeth, which made people feel like the hairs all over his body were standing on end. He looked up at the riots on the tall buildings. Riot, I didn't kill you last time, I won't give you another chance this time. After saying that, Venom suddenly raised his head. There was a crash behind him, and a pair of flesh wings appeared. The appearance is already ferocious, but it becomes even more domineering because of a pair of flesh wings. What's going on? Why is he different from before? Iron Man was stunned. After Riot on the high-rise building saw Venom's wings, he clenched his fists fiercely, and greed and madness filled his eyes. This evolved his own bloodline by devouring his own race. But that's fine. After I kill him and devour him, my bloodline will also evolve. However, as soon as his thoughts came to his mind, Venom had already vibrated its wings, soared into the air, and came to the opposite side of him. Riot, you shouldn't have brought them to Earth. Earth is a beautiful place. I like it here. I won't let you destroy it. I will kill you and kill all the symbiotes. Haha, <laughs> you. One person wants to kill us all. Have you asked me? Have you asked our king? Oh, I forgot to tell you, our king is not on the earth, he has gone to a higher place level of the divine realm. After he coexists with the gods of the divine realm, they will lead an army of gods to sweep across the entire universe. In the meantime, I would like to see how you protect this place. After Riot finished speaking, he immediately burst into laughter. Full of elation and pride. The king of symbiote went to God's domain. If the god of God's domain is possessed by the symbiote, then. Su Han's voice was also full of worry. However, Venom growled and said, that will happen in the future, but now, I will kill you and these scum first. After Venom finished speaking, his body rose tens of meters higher again. Then, black spikes the size of fingertips began to appear on his body. As soon as these spikes appeared, the violent expression suddenly turned aside. Die. Venom roared, and the black spikes on his body burst out instantly. There were so many that they were like raindrops. These black spikes shot directly towards the ground with the sound of breaking through the air. The radiation is so wide that it is like a big black net that has enveloped the entire murloc port. Ah. Ah. In an instant, countless miserable howls sounded from the ground. The penetrating power of these black spikes is so strong that it is suffocating. Nearly 10,000 symbionts were all pinned alive to the ground and walls by these black spikes. Not even the riots escaped. With just one move, Venom crushed this huge team of symbiotes. This scene directly scared the piss out of Iron Man and Spider-Man. They originally thought that Venom could not resist so many symbiotes, but little did they know that Venom's combat effectiveness was beyond their imagination. Nick, the situation seems to have gone amiss. This is no longer something you and I can handle. Only God can compete with him. However, the one-eyed Nick in the contact retorted, no, Tony, I just found out. These guys are called symbiotes. What they are most afraid of is high temperature flames and high decibel noise. If there is a weakness, there is a solution. You go prepare incendiary bombs and aim at the black guy, he is the strongest, kill him and we will win. But, he, Iron Man was originally going to say that Venom didn't seem that bad. At least the ones he killed were symbiotes. But he endured it. Because the move Venom just performed was too powerful. If one day he uses this trick against ordinary humans, how terrifying would his lethality be? This is simply a nuclear bomb. 
Once he breaks out, he can destroy a city's population in an instant. So, he endured it. The earth does not need such terrifying creatures. Okay, I'll get ready right away, give me eight minutes. After Iron Man finished speaking, he quickly turned back to Stark Industries. He was going back to reload his weapon. On the other side, although the venom completely crushed these symbiotes, the symbiotes were extremely vital. These black spikes only temporarily disabled their mobility. If they were given time to relax, they would recover immediately. Of. Venom's main goal, though, is rioting. So he flapped his wings and was in front of the riot in an instant. Riot had panic in his eyes when he saw Venom. I didn't know the strength of Venom before, and I still wanted to devour him. Now it seems that I am just talking nonsense. Venom looked at Riot who was pinned to the ground and stepped on the opponent's body. Riot, although we have fought together in the past, the situation is different now. I really like the earth, the tranquility here, the simplicity and beauty here. I don't want to go to the universe to fight and kill anymore, I don't want to I plundered other people's planets with you. So, rest in peace. The venom opened its bloody mouth and bit down mercilessly. The venom bit off the violent head and chewed it up. Such an action undoubtedly caused the rest of the symbiotes to lose their souls. The boss is dead, and these minions are still fooling around. However, there are some very smart people among the symbiotes. As soon as they saw that the riot was dead, they immediately turned the tables and said to Venom, Venom, how about you be our leader, and we will hang out with you, and we will do whatever you ask us to do, without any hesitation. Hearing this, Venom turned his head and grabbed the violent torso with his hands, crunching it as if chewing sugar cane. Oh, you can do whatever I ask you to do. The venomous Kazlan's big eyes reveal evil nature. All the symbiotes were panicked when they saw him. But at this moment, everyone is a knife and a fish, and even if they are afraid of the venom, they still have to take the risk and give it a try. If venom is really moved, then they may be able to save the day and avoid death. Yes, we will do whatever you ask us to do. Good. Venom's voice suddenly increased. Then I order you all to stay where you are and don't want to move. Let me eat slowly. There are too many people, I can't eat them. After Venom finished speaking, he didn't forget to show his teeth. All the symbionts were stunned, and then they all said the words, fake, fake you, and, fake you Massachusetts. Venom smiled, not angry at all. He just opened his big mouth, swallowed the rioters cleanly, and then aimed at them. The next moment, screams began to echo throughout the entire fishman port. Just as the venom was devouring the symbiote, one-eyed Nick once again appeared in the sky above San Francisco driving the flying aircraft carrier. He stood on the aircraft carrier and looked at the murloc port below, with cruelty in his eyes. Tony, I'm ready here, what about you? Iron Man's reply came immediately from the contact. I'm okay here, I can take action at any time. After hearing this, one-eyed Nick immediately ordered to the people behind him, start pouring oil. Following one-eyed Nick's order, the three fighter jets immediately took off from the aircraft carrier. The three fighter jets all carried a lot of oil barrels. These fighter jets flew over the fishman port and then opened the lids of the oil drums. In an instant, countless amounts of gasoline began to pour out. All the gasoline fell towards the fishman port, falling on Venom and the symbiotes. Venom, which was still devouring the symbiote, changed its expression after smelling the smell of gasoline. Before he had much time to react, Iron Man immediately appeared in the void, and then he spread his hands, and his palms pressed against the muzzles that turned into two black holes. When Venom saw this scene, his heart beat wildly. Axie, let's finish. As his words fell, Iron Man's hands immediately spurted out two tongues of fire. Wow. The tongues of fire instantly ignited the gasoline in the air, creating a spectacle of sea of fire and sky. In the blink of an eye, the entire murloc port was engulfed in flames. Countless symbionts let out terrifying screams inside, but in less than a minute, the aroma of meat filled the entire fishman port. Tony, don't be careless. That black guy has wings. Maybe he can escape. I know, I have my ultimate move waiting. Tony Stark is keeping an eye on the fishman port. As long as Venom can escape, he will definitely give him a head on blow. But, he was disappointed. Half an hour later, nothing happened. An hour later, still no movement. Three hours later, deathly silence. 
It seems that he should be dead. Tony said to one-eyed Nick through the communicator. Yes, it has been three hours. Even if he is made of copper and iron, he has melted and is ready to put out the fire. One-eyed Nick said. Although the fire only burned for three hours. But it took a full six hours to put it out. By the time the fire was completely extinguished, the entire fishman port had been reduced to ruins. As a last resort, S.H.I.E.L.D. had no choice but to contact the local police and temporarily block the entire fishman port. That night, the disaster in San Francisco was reported on the evening news across the country. The president has spoken out about this, requesting a three-minute nationwide power outage to express condolences for the disaster in Fishman Harbor. 8 o'clock sharp. The San Francisco Power Administration began cutting off power as required. As soon as the main gate was closed, the entire city turned into a black city in an instant. However, just when the whole city was dim. Among the ruins of the fishman port, a faint green light flickered quietly. It is like a firefly in the night, emitting its own faint light. Among the pile of ashes, a green cocoon was gradually fading away, and then the contents inside the cocoon were revealed. Astonishingly, he was a baby with tender skin all over his body. The baby's skin was as white as snow, almost transparent, and the blood vessels and organs under the skin could be clearly seen. But the next moment, a layer of black mucus began to appear on the baby's body. The mucus instantly enveloped him, and then formed a concentrated version of venom. Ho ho, Su Han, you turned into a baby and made me become so small. Venom grinned with big white teeth. Stop talking nonsense and find a place to put me down. Su Han replied immediately. Yes, this is Su Han. The fire did not burn him to death because when the fire spread to him, he had already devoured enough life force to start his evolution directly in the fire. The green cocoon blocked the flames perfectly. At the same time, it also prevents others from coming in and disturbing him. This allowed him to go through this evolution perfectly. And this evolution turned him completely into a baby, like a phoenix reborn, perfectly reborn. After listening to Su Han's words, Venom immediately stretched out a pair of flesh wings, and then soared into the sky. After three minutes of silence, power was restored to the city and everything was back on track. Peter had also had dinner with Mary and Jay and was heading home. Their friendship was strong tonight, their bodies felt warm and itchy, and they really needed to go home and do something. Even on the way, they couldn't hold it any longer and started kissing each other. The two of them hugged and went upstairs, and Peter impatiently took Mary upstairs. But before he could take out the key and open the door, a snow-white figure immediately attracted all his attention. It was an unwrapped baby, all white as jade, with veins and organs under the skin clearly visible. Oh, the dog seller. Mary exclaimed, then rushed over first, carefully knelt down on the ground, and checked the baby's condition. He is healthy and doesn't seem to have any physical illness. Who left him here? Mary carefully picked up the baby while Peter went and knocked on the landlord's door. Landlord, where did this child come from? The house and his daughter looked at the child in Mary's hands in surprise, and said in shock, Oh, Peter, you actually have a child. The landlord's daughter even cheered and said, Congratulations, congratulations on your baby boy. Peter was speechless and asked again, This is not my child. I don't know who put it at my door. Did you see anyone here? The landlord and his daughter immediately shook their heads. Alas. Peter sighed and turned to look at the child again. Mary, we should call the police and send the child to an orphanage. When Mary heard this, she looked at Peter in surprise. Peter, we should adopt him. This is God's will. He sent this child to you. You have to keep him. Don't worry, I will take care of him with you. Look how cute he is, I like him so much. Mary held the baby and tried to tease it. The child was also well behaved, neither crying nor fussing, and just stayed in Mary's arms. Ha ha. Of course he behaved. Because he is Su Han. Su Han is now a baby and he needs a guardian. At least as an infant, he needs a guardian. Although he is fully capable of surviving on his own. But it's so inconvenient. Anyone who sees a little baby going out to find food by himself will probably have a heart attack. Therefore, Suhan thought about it and finally decided to come back to Peter and let Peter become his guardian. But, I'm still in school, I don't have the ability to support him, and the law won't let me, a single man, adopt a child.
Peter said rather embarrassedly. When Mary heard this, she replied very naturally, Why are you alone? Don't you still have me? We can go get the certificate, and we can work together to support him. Mary didn't realize what she had said until she finished speaking. However, she didn't regret it at all, just a little shy. Peter, on the other hand, was completely stunned. This is an unexpected gain. He likes Mary and wants to marry her. Okay, since you said so, let's get married. We will raise this child together. I will ask Harry for help with the procedures for taking in the child. I want to name him after my friend, let's call him Su Han. How about it? Okay, no problem, just call me Su Han. The two of them mapped out a future in an instant. Beautiful and grand. However, they soon encountered a huge problem. When the two returned home with the baby in their arms, Mary immediately ran out to the store to buy baby clothes, bottles, milk and milk powder. However, when they mixed the milk powder and prepared to feed the child, the child refused to open his mouth and refused to eat no matter how much he was fed. This made the two of them anxious. If a child doesn't eat, he will starve. Inside the house, Peter and Mary sat on the G. Mary held Su Han in one hand and a milk bottle in the other. She gently teased Su Han's nipples with her breasts, but Su Han refused to open them. Instead, he stared at her with his big innocent eyes, even a little melancholy, as if he had infinite words to say. Ha ha, of course Su Han has something to say, he just can't say it. He doesn't need milk. To be precise, he couldn't drink milk. After this evolution, his body became the size of a baby. That is when the human body is at its purest. From now on, not only can he not drink milk powder, he can't even eat anything with impurities. This will pollute his body and destroy his strength. Yes, Su Han is extremely powerful now. Having the purest body also represents Su Han's current strength, which is extremely powerful. Although he has not tested it carefully, Su Han is now confident enough to go head to head with Hulk, the most promising person in the Marvel Universe. Of course, this is just Su Han's own feeling. The actual situation can only be known through comparison. Now, facing Mary's crazy, breastfeeding, he felt a headache. He really wanted to tell Mary and Jay to stop trying to get him to drink milk. He doesn't need this, he just needs to drink some dew or rootless water now. Or, just find some living creatures for him to absorb. Both plants and animals are available. When it comes to this, we have to talk about the abilities Su Han gained after this evolution. Su Han's first evolution was to activate the body's evolutionary mechanism. The second evolution gained the ability Beast Language. The third evolution gave him the ability to fly in the air. And this time is Su Han's fourth evolution. The ability he gained is Devour. Yes, the previous devouring was all done by Venom. Every time you need to obtain energy, you need to transform into the form of Venom to swallow the enemy's life. But now there is no need, because Su Han has also mastered the ability to devour. Even more terrifying is his devouring ability. The venom consumes energy and is absorbed by devouring the opponent's body. But Su Han can forcibly extract the life force from the opponent's body. More powerful, more terrifying. If others knew about Su Han's ability, he would probably be called a vampire. Baby, eat some, be good. Mary and Jay are still trying to feed Su Han. She thought her holding position was wrong, and then she started switching from left hand to right hand, then right hand to left hand, and then thought it was a bad place. She went from the room to the corridor and even ran to the top of the building. However, the result is the same. Don't eat. Maybe, he's not hungry. Peter said tentatively. Mary glared at him. How can you not be hungry? The children have eaten and slept. Peter immediately did not dare to cheat. However, Mary seemed to realize this and finally stopped forcing her to breastfeed. She started to tidy up the G bunk. She would stay here tonight and take care of Su Han. Peter's gills are not big enough, so sleeping three people is unlikely. In the end, Peter was driven to the floor by Mary, while Mary hugged Su Han and slept on the bed. Night. Soundless silence. Peter lay pitifully on the floor and looked at Mary and Su Han. Tonight was supposed to be a good night for him and Mary. If this little baby hadn't appeared, he and Mary would be applauding for love at this moment. When he thought of this, Peter actually showed aggrieved eyes. Mary on the bed had gradually fallen asleep, 
but Su Han opened his big, sneaky eyes and glanced at Peter on the ground. The moment their eyes met, Peter was slightly startled. At this moment, he actually saw a little bit of Su Han's eagerness in this child. But he soon laughed to himself. I'm crazy to think that Su Han was out there trying to make people happy, then gave birth to a child and ran away. He actually thought that this little baby was Su Han's son. Even if he were beaten to death, he would not have thought that this was Su Han's son, he was clearly Su Han himself. After hearing Peter's whisper, Su Han rolled his eyes, and then said silently in his heart, I'm sorry, brother, I'll let you sleep with your wife for a while first, and I'll return it to you later. Things are simple after that. Peter and Mary got married, and with Harry's help, they successfully adopted Su Han and became Su Han's guardians. Mary was busy rehearsing the new musical and had no time, so she left Su Han to Peter. Peter had no choice but to tie Su Han to his body and carry it with him wherever he went. Moreover, after having children, the two of them worked extra hard. However, the only thing that worries them is that a week has passed since the child was adopted, but he still refuses to eat. I took her to the hospital for a checkup, but the doctor said the child was in excellent health and there was nothing wrong with her. The two of them were also very confused about this, but they still couldn't find the reason. On this day, Peter was sitting in the park enjoying his lunch. Recently, in addition to studying, he has also worked part-time as a food delivery, express delivery, and newspaper photographer. He had just finished his part-time job delivering food and was eating delicious pizza. Su Han was placed on the grass beside him. He was so hungry that he just ate by himself and didn't notice what Su Han was doing next to him. Joe Sao, I haven't eaten for a week and I'm starving. Su Han said silently in his heart. Then I saw him taking out his tender little hands and placing them on the grass. Swallow. In an instant, the green grass under Su Han's fingers began to shrink and turn yellow, and spread rapidly around. Su Han's fingertips immediately flashed with green light spots. These light spots were absorbed by Su Han's fingers and then entered his body. The vitality of the grass is extremely weak, but fortunately there are many, which can barely make up for it. Su Han absorbed the vitality of a large piece of grass, but only accumulated a small amount of vitality. Not to mention full, it was not even enough to quench his thirst. But Su Han couldn't let go and devour the vitality of these grasses. After all, this ability was too shocking, so he focused his attention on the small forest behind him. Su Han blinked, and then he saw a little green light flashing in his pupils, and a big tree not far away immediately started to move automatically without wind. I saw something like smoke immediately starting to float from the big tree. These smoke floated out from the tree trunks, branches, and leaves, and then gathered into clear streams and floated into Su Han's mouth. As the smoke drifted out, the big trees were yellowing and withering at a speed visible to the naked eye. Pieces of yellow leaves fell, and the originally green bark also rolled up and dried. In the blink of an eye, a big tree withered completely. The powerful wind blew by, and all the leaves of the big tree blew towards the grass. All white. Spider-Man, who was eating, was, attacked, by Huang Yi and jumped up in shock. It was only then that he noticed the anomaly around him. The surrounding grass was green, but the area under his buttocks was brown. And the big tree behind me, which was green before, suddenly turned into bare dry branches. A strange feeling lingered around him. He thought about it, but he still couldn't tear her apart. In the end, he could only pick up Su Han and turn around to leave. At this time, Su Han had gained a little supply after devouring a piece of grass and a big tree, so it was okay to be hungry for two more days. At the same time, he was also frightened by his devouring ability. There are two ways of devouring him. One is contact phagocytosis. For example, just like swallowing the grass, touch the grass with your fingers and directly absorb its life force. This method of swallowing is effortless, but requires close proximity. The other is non-contact swallowing. For example, like swallowing a big tree just now, Suhan can swallow things within a certain range by activating his swallowing ability. This method is very strange and mysterious, but it consumes a lot of energy. It makes you tired easily if you use it too much. Both devouring methods have their own advantages, but there is no doubt that they are both very powerful and terrifying. Peter took Suhan home. 
Just as he entered the house, Peter's aunt ran over. Peter, we need to go to the police station. It is said that there are some new clues in your uncle's case. When Peter heard this, he immediately frowned. Isn't uncle's case over? Peter asked. Peter had already solved the man who killed his uncle with his own hands, so the case should be over. Why did the police call at this time? It is said that the dead robber was not the real culprit. The real culprit was someone else. Peter was stunned for a moment. Soon, the two came to the police station. The police sergeant in charge of his uncle's case received him personally. Peter, it's like this. According to a recent case, we found out that the robber who died before was not the real murderer of your uncle. He was at most an accomplice. The real murderer was this person, and he was also a terrorist who has been active recently has super powers and has transformed into a desert. The sheriff handed Peter a photo. Peter was completely stunned. Because of his shock, Peter even forgot that he was still holding Su Han in his arms. He slammed the table and roared. Why didn't you find out about this earlier? Why didn't you tell me until now? Peter was angry. He felt that he might have killed the wrong person, and at the same time, it was also because of the grievance in his heart. At first, he thought he had caused his uncle's death by letting the robber go. So he has been feeling guilty and uncomfortable. Now, the sheriff tells him that man is not the murderer. In other words, it was not his fault that led to his uncle's death. So he is angry and uncomfortable. This is like a person who has been in jail for several years and is finally released, only to have the police tell him that he arrested the wrong person and that he is sorry. Anyone else would have exploded on the spot. So Peter lost control. He even put Su Han directly on the sheriff's desk and ran away. In the end, it was Peter's aunt who picked up Su Han, got up and left the office. When the aunt returned home, she found that Peter was not there. She was worried that something had happened to Peter, so she immediately went out to look for him. At this time, Peter had already put on Spider-Man's suit and went to find the Sandman. In a sewer in San Francisco, the Sandman was holding two money bags in his hands, full of joy. His daughter is sick and he needs money to save the child. GG, I said that the fastest way to get money is by robbing banks. A strange and ferocious voice sounded from behind the Sandman. Then, some sticky liquid began to emerge from the back of the Sandman, and finally formed a human face. It's a symbiote. The Sand people were actually parasitized by the symbiote. Just as the symbiote and the Sandman were chatting in the sewer, a shadow immediately appeared at the top of the sewer. The shadow clattered down and stood in front of the Sandman. It's Spider-Man. Just listen to Spider-Man shouting in an extremely sad and angry voice. You. Peter immediately rushed over and fought with the Sandman. The strength of both of them is far beyond that of ordinary people. These pipes made of reinforced concrete are as fragile as tofu in their hands, and they are easily smashed into pieces. Peter punched and the sewer wall was immediately punched through. The strength of the Sandman itself is extraordinary. With the increase of the symbiote, the Sandman's ability has been greatly strengthened. Facing Peter's attack, the fight was back and forth. The two of them just had a few fights and collisions, and the sewer was already damaged to a great extent. In the end, the two of them got entangled together and then crashed upwards, directly punching through the sewer and appearing on the ground. The place where the two appeared was exactly in the middle of the road. Some vehicles had no time to break and crashed into them. However, the two of them were only staggered by the collision and were not seriously injured. Instead, those cars lost control and ran rampant, causing huge damage. This caused great confusion in the whole street. At the end of the street, Aunt May also appeared there holding Su Han. Su Han immediately saw Peter fighting with the Sand Man. On his young face, a pair of small eyebrows wrinkled slightly. The Sand Man has a symbiote on him, and things don't seem to be good for Peter. Su Han is now almost as sensitive to the existence of symbionts as Radar. Whenever a symbiote appears within the range of his five senses, he can easily detect who it is. Su Han glanced at Aunt May and rolled his eyes slightly. He wanted to help Peter, but with Aunt May around, it was not convenient. However, the opportunity soon came. The fighting area between Peter and the Sandman grew larger and larger, and soon spread to their area. The Sandman punched Peter into the air, and then turned into a piece of yellow sand. The yellow sand filled the sky and immediately blocked the sight of passers-by. 
Everyone rushed to knock down the elderly Aunt May. The Suhan in her hand was also thrown away and escaped from her palm. It's now. As soon as Suhan left Aunt May's hand, he immediately turned over gracefully in the air, stepped on a telephone pole on the side of the road, used the force to rebound, and then landed firmly on the ground. He was standing in the yellow sand wearing a diaper and glanced at Aunt May, who was lying on the ground not far away. Then he moved his short, tender legs and ran towards Aunt May quickly. He came behind Aunt May, then stretched out his young hands to grab Aunt May's clothes, and easily lifted Aunt May up. Due to his limited height, Suhan could only lift Aunt May half a meter above the ground. Although his little white legs were short, he ran extremely fast. He carried Aunt May like a little hamster and put her in a safe corner. Then he jumped directly off the ground, then stepped into the void and walked away directly in the air. Aunt May never saw clearly who brought her here. But she quickly got up and started looking for Su Han. Su Han, my Su Han, who has seen my little baby. At this time, Su Han had already run through the air and arrived at the battle area between Peter and the Sandman. The two of them were fighting on a tall building at the moment. It was said to be a fight, but in reality it was a beating. Peter is getting beaten. The Sandman with the symbiote amplification is very powerful, and very evil and violent. Peter is no match for him and was beaten badly. Seeing this, Su Han sighed slightly. After all, he is also his guardian. Seeing his guardian being beaten like this by others, he doesn't want to lose face, right? So after Su Han sighed, he quickly flew to a house and found a sweater to put on. The size of the sweatshirt is twice as big as Su Han's, and it can completely cover his body so that others cannot see his body. This is his disguise. Venom's appearance had long been revealed, and Peter recognized it. Moreover, the venom has been, burned to death, in the fire. If it reappears, it will probably cause unnecessary trouble. So he could only rely on Su Han's own strength. After Su Han was armed, he quickly flew into the air. Boom. Peter was punched by the Sandman and smashed into a building. Su Han saw this and seized the opportunity to take action. He was seen flying in front of the Sandman, and then hid in his sweater. He instantly turned into an afterimage, and with a hiss, he scattered the condensed Sandman like a cannonball. Swallow. I saw a little green light appearing in Su Han's eyes. Immediately, misty auras began to float out of the Sandman's body. These auras were visible to the naked eye and began to drift towards Su Han's location. When Peter came out of the building, he happened to see this scene. He looked at the sweatshirt in shock, not knowing what to do. No. The symbiote on the sand body let out a miserable howl of reluctance. Because Su Han only swallowed the symbiote attached to the surface of the sand body, not the sand man. However, no matter how unwilling he was, he was still unable to withstand Su Han's devouring power. In an instant, the symbiote was devoured by Su Han and turned into particles, completely separated from the Sandman. And the Sandman looked at all this blankly, as if he had just woken up from a dream. With the symbiote dead, Su Han has little interest in the Sand people. But Peter focused all his attention on the Sandman. Because he thought it was the Sandman who shot his uncle. Su Han was not interested in learning more about this matter. His interest was, he was hungry. It was a rare opportunity to go out and do some activities on his own, so of course he had to fill his stomach. He looked at the landscape trees on the street below and raised the corners of his lips. Green light appeared in his eyes again, and in an instant, all the green landscape trees began to shake. Then, Faint air currents began to emerge from each tree, and these air currents all rushed towards Su Han from all directions. The appearance of this scene immediately attracted the attention of countless people. After all, such a scene is too shocking. Even Peter forcibly shifted his attention from the sand man to Su Han. However, Su Han is now hidden in a large sweater and cannot see his appearance. In fact, from the perspective of outsiders, it is just a weird dress. What is this? What is he doing? People on the street stopped to watch and asked questions. The city guards were already on standby and cordoned off the area. Su Han didn't care about this. Under his devouring ability, the life force within the landscape tree is being absorbed. And those trees are withering and dying at a speed visible to the naked eye. First, the green leaves withered and turned yellow, then fell off, then the branches shrank, and the trunks peeled. 
Finally, all the trees were turned into dead trees by Su Han's devouring power. After completing all this, he showed a satisfied smile in his sweater. Although I'm still not completely full, at least I'm not hungry. With this vitality, Su Han doesn't need to eat for a long time. At the same time, he will also start to grow again due to absorbing these life forces. But this growth process will not be as fast as the reverse growth after evolution. He will grow up little by little, turning from a baby into a teenage Su Han again. But this process doesn't take as long as more than 10 years, it only takes a few years or even a few months. Su Han himself can't tell. He will naturally know by then, so he doesn't need to worry about this at all. After absorbing the life force, he glanced at Peter again, then turned and flew towards the city. When Peter saw this, he actually gave up on the Sandman and ran after him instead. Su Han smiled slightly, then sped up and quickly found a bunker to avoid the figure for a few seconds. Taking advantage of this moment, Su Han threw away his sweater, then ran to a trash can and hid on his short legs. As soon as he did all this, Peter was already chasing him. However, he just passed over Su Han's head and did not find Su Han. He didn't find Su Han, but instead found Aunt May who was frantically looking for Su Han. Peter froze when he heard Aunt May calling Su Han's name. Only then did he realize that Su Han had been left on the sheriff's desk by him. He pulled off his hood in a panic, then found a deserted place and took off Spider-Man's suit. Aunt May. Peter shows up to meet Aunt May. As soon as Aunt May saw Peter, she burst into tears and cried that he had lost Su Han. Peter quickly comforted him. At this time, Su Han had also arrived near Aunt May. Seeing that the two of them were anxious because of his disappearance, Su Han felt warm in his heart, and then found an alley not far from them and lay down obediently. Then he howled twice. Sure enough, Aunt May and Peter rushed over immediately after hearing the sound. When they found Su Han, both of them cried with joy. They held Su Han in their arms, tightly. Su Han, on the other hand, thought secretly in his heart, I have to save people and also have to lie down and wait for someone to come to me. I feel so tired. The Sandman incident is over. Peter became a little nervous because he lost Su Han this time. He would look at Su Han wherever he went and never let Su Han leave his sight. This made Su Han roll his eyes. However, after experiencing this incident, Su Han also had a wake-up call in his heart. Although tens of thousands of symbiotes were killed last time, there are still countless symbiotes lurking in the city. Symbiotes are pretty average without a host. But once they have a host, their strength will be infinitely amplified. In fact, they will become more terrifying depending on the strength of the host. Such as Sandman. The Sandman itself is very powerful, and coupled with the increase in the body of the sympathizer, the Sandman's combat power directly crushed Peter and beat Peter to death. This is what Su Han doesn't want to see. So he began to communicate with Venom silently in his mind. Venom, is there any way to give Peter a symbiote without affecting him? Venom heard this and said in a slightly surprised tone, you want Spider-Man to be parasitized. Yes, I want him to become stronger. Venom pondered for a moment and finally replied, of course there are ways, but people parasitized by the symbiote will still be affected to some extent. Are you sure you want to do this? Su Han sighed slightly, but replied firmly, sure. Well, I will separate some tissue from myself and parasitize it on him. That night, after Peter fell asleep, a layer of black mucus quietly appeared on Su Han's arm. The mucus detached from Su Han's arm bit by bit, and then formed a whole body, climbed onto Peter's body, and finally successfully parasitized. It all happened quietly and seemed simple. But Su Han felt a little exhausted. After all, letting Venom separate a part of himself is extremely risky and laborious. If it weren't for Su Han's wishes, Venom would never have done this. The tissue separated from me will form a whole by itself, but since it is only a part of me, not the whole, so after it parasitizes Peter, it may cause some changes in Peter's character, but the amplification effect is the same. Venom explained. Um. Su Han was very satisfied with the result. After all, Venom is very strong now. After following him, it has also evolved, and its strength is far beyond that of ordinary symbiotes. As long as the amplification effect is the same, it doesn't matter if there are some changes in personality. 
strength is fundamental. Because the two activities of Suhan swallowing the landscape trees and letting the venom separate the tissue yesterday were extremely physically demanding. So Suhan rarely slept deeply. When I woke up, it was already early morning. As soon as he opened his eyes, he saw Mary and Peter staring at him. This made Su Han feel bad. Hey, why did he grow so big overnight? Peter, he, is human, right? Mary kept asking questions. And Peter's eyes were full of weirdness and doubt. Later, Su Han discovered that his hands and feet seemed to be longer. Su Han understood. Because of the relationship between swallowing the landscape tree and the symbiote yesterday, his body should have grown somewhat. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.